Fed Podcast, the podcast exploring our fantasy wrestling hobby, where the wrestling is written, but the characters are real. I'm your host, Mikey Unlikely, and I'd like to thank you for joining us here on the Atomic Dropcast Network. And we're here, we're live, well, we're not live for you, we're back for episode 40 of the eFed Podcast here on the Atomic Dropcast Network. Guys, I'm so excited you decided to join us today. We're going to have a great show for you. I know I say it each and every week, but I've got a good friend on the show today. I guess I'm just making a whole lot of friends in e-wrestling. But this is, this one goes way back, 2015. A uh, guy that I've tag-teamed with, a guy that I've been in a stable with, a guy that I've been playing the game with, and recently, a guy that I pulled back into the game. Excited to have Jay on the show, the handler of perfection, and many, many more. He's been over in high-octane wrestling, the Wrestle UTA. Uh, defiance, and much more, and he's got a long history of stuff that I didn't know him for. So we're going to get into all of that and much more in the interview series. I'm excited for that. We've also got the brand new question of the week here on the eFed podcast, and thank you guys so much for participating in that. I loved getting all those answers. We're going to go over that, and we're going to go over EWTs and much, much more. Excited to have everybody here tuning in. I think we're going to have a great episode today. I can't believe we've hit episode 40 Man, this has been a wild ride since November. We're coming up on a year here in a couple months, and I couldn't be happier about the response, about the uh, listenership, and basically about the Discord. Guys, if you don't know about the Discord, you need to hop on over to the e- at the eFed podcast on Twitter. There in our profile is a Discord link where you can hop in, and uh, you can take part in our little eFed community that we've started there. It's great. We've got guys from the cost side of the game. We've got guys from Angle, Roleplay, Hybrid. It doesn't matter. They're all over there. We can talk about the game. We can talk about wrestling. We can talk about life. So join us over there in the Discord. Of course, you can catch us on the Twitter machine at the EFED Podcast. That's where you can interact with the show, answer the question of the week, and more. And actually, the Spotlight segment is back this week. Excited to have that back here. And uh, it's going to be more of a one-off thing when people volunteer their information and they want to, they're fed on blast, they can hit me up at the eFed podcast on Twitter or on the Discord, and we'll get you set up for a little spotlight segment. All right, guys, before we get into the show, please listen to a word from our sponsors and support them as they help take care of us and help support the show and both financially and advertisingly. That's not a word, but we created it today here in the eFed podcast. Occupy Pro Wrestling, putting the smart back into smart mark since 2012 as we grapple with design and media services for wrestlers, promotions, and podcasters. We strive to enjoy pro wrestling in our community and podcast, centered around interviews with wrestlers and fans alike. If you like what you see and hear, check out the Central Hub for everything we're doing and the latest from our site partners over at OccupyProWrestling.com. All right, guys, the eFed podcast is very happy to announce its brand new partnership over on Facebook with the Social Media Wrestling Association. The Social Media Wrestling Association, along with its 16,000 member strong influence page known as Generational Wrestling Society, has proven to be the true revolutionary eFed company of Facebook. The SWA welcomes written, video, and audio promos for its talent, as well as results provided in live 2K audio commentary and written results. The SWA is more than just an eFed with GWS. All areas of the wrestling community are covered. From belt collectors, wrestling news, trivia, and podcasts, and eFeds, check them out on Facebook at Social Media Wrestling Association and Generational Wrestling Society. You can give a search for both. Once you join both, you'll be glad to become associated with the society. And we're going to be posting our show on Facebook exclusively on the SWA and GWS sites. And we're very happy to have announced this partnership with the SWA. And you can hear about it here every week. So guys, go check them out. Social Media Wrestling Association on Facebook. Defiance, an angle fed boasting eight years of continuous fantasy wrestling. Defiance offers opportunities for original characters, micros, a standalone website utilizing backstage three script, and a forum hosted on the long running fwrestling.com, as well as a roster full of some of the most experienced writers in the game. Come see for yourself at defiancewrestling.com. That's defiancewrestling.com. Hey guys. 
Are you digging this podcast? Well, we really appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you check out my other podcast. The Atomic Dropcast is a look back at the wrestling of yesteryear through adult eyes. We watch the wrestling that we watched as kids, as adults, with a couple of beers in our hands. It's a great time. Check it out over at AtomicDropcast.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. OCW Fed is a hybrid pro wrestling eFed that combines elements of role play and competitive play using the WWE 2K franchise. Whether you're on PlayStation or Xbox, OCW Fed is a creative outlet for gamers and pro wrestling fans alike. With over 16 years experience producing weekly content and live Twitch events, OCW Fed has a thriving community with handlers from all over the world. If this sounds like your cup of tea, come check us out at OCWFed.com, OCW Fed TV on YouTube, and OCW Fed on Twitch. It's like D&D for wrestling nerds. Hey everybody, it's Mikey. No, we're not back to the show just yet. First, I want to tell you about my Patreon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, no. Am I going to have to pay for the podcast? No. The answer is emphatically no. The show has been and forever will be free. No, Brunk. You will not have to pay for the podcast. However, we have been asked by a handful of people how they can help support the show. And we've also been asked, mostly by Fuzz, why we didn't have a Patreon yet. And I quote... You stupid mother f- I can't believe you don't have a Patreon. I will f- hurt you if you don't take my money now. End quote. That was Fuzz. He's a scary dude. So with that in mind, you can find us at patreon.com slash efedpodcast. Contributions start as low as $3 a month. Thank you very much for your consideration. Please get fuzz off our backs. The EFED question of the week is brought to you by the EWC. The Extreme Wrestling Corporation is the game's longest running roleplay EFED, having been established in 1997. With over 100 active role players across four unique brands, the EWC offers opt in booking on all of its bi weekly shows. It's home to Stranglemania and the four day wrestling festival known as WrestleFest. The EWC is built on its welcoming community with zero bias and no drama. All styles are welcome. Come check out the EWC today at EWC4life.com. That's EWC, the number four, life.com. All right, question of the week time. This week's question of the week. What formatting pet peeves do you have after playing this game? Interesting. I know we're all writers. I know we all have our own little specific uh, styles of writing. We all have our own little things we like to include. But what about the things that you hate reading? I'm really excited to read these. And uh, I know I've got a few, but we're not going to get into that here on the show. Let's hear yours. Over on the Discord side of things, we got Mongo the Destroyer. I'm not really a fan of shows being centered. I can dig it for promos, especially more artistic ones. But when commentary lines are uneven, it really gets on my nerves for some reason. (laughs) <laughs> at Seth is Burns colors this shit is in 1998 and you're not on Angel Fire or GeoCities you know unless you are then you should probably update your AOL or something <laughs> Seth Alex Smiley over one of our patrons I have two one for RPs and one for matches and segments when using colors that are barely readable against the background of the forums And two, not following clear and specific guidelines to formatting provided by the Fed, right? There are rules, formatting, all kinds of things for a reason. If you're not following them, you're probably not paying attention to the rest of the stuff. At Judge Megan, one of our patrons, when a code is not locked in and screws the whole show up, that you have to take minutes to find where the issue is. That's a huge pain in the ass. Another thing is dark colors on a dark skin or too bright or light on a bright light skin. I already have bad eyesight. I don't need it to become worse. Yes, I hate when I don't put a uh, end tag on my HTML and the whole document's messed up because then I got to go back and find that one spot where I have to do a little bit of formatting. Rick, T-E-F-P-O-G. I hate when I type in the command to format my hard drive and it doesn't work. So I have to use an industrial magnet to wipe it clean. 
Good thing I know a guy who sells industrial magnets. <laughs> uh, MDG wrestling game Warren. I'm assuming this is a coding thing. In one fed, the shows would delete parentheses one time, and then another time it would let it go. Then they would delete it on another match. It made it difficult to know if parenthetical statements were allowed or not. And it really jacked up several of my segments for the shows, making them more difficult for the reader to know what was happening. Yeah, anybody who's going through and making mass edits on your stuff without telling you, that's, uh, that's cause for concern. At Jakey, I don't care if the text is flashing, centered, neon font color, and there's a hidden message in the RP that when you read it, you're haunted forever by a poltergeist. As long as you break up your paragraphs, I'm happy. Six or seven sentences at most. Six or seven. Thanks, Jakey. Love that. No blocks of text for Jakey. At Ravage, if you have chosen color for your character and you picked one that's hard to read against the board background, and you get told this, but you don't fix it. You deserve to be raked over the shattered remains of my glasses as I throw them down on the ground in frustration and then soaked in a bath of pure lemon juice while being forced to listen to Mark Madden describe WCW Saturday night matches from the early 90s. <laughs> That's a little rough, Ravage. I love it. I like the attitude. The masked guy, this is a new guy in our Discord, and he's been a fun addition too. Anything that requires more energy than using bold, italics, or underline is too much for me. I don't care if that makes me seem lazy AF. <laughs> At Brunk. Colors and large blocks of text and terrible grammar and terrible spelling. Centering. Just stop. Tell him, Brunk. Fuzz Master Flex, the Fuzz Master. There honestly isn't anything with formatting that bothers me. You want to align right? Go ahead. Use the rainbow? Be my guest. The only thing that should matter is the content. How it's dressed shouldn't matter. All right. Fuzz on the attack. He's on the other side of the fence. At Bobo, I hate when my opponents write anything. <laughs> He likes a good no-show for his matches. At Spectacular Disaster, our good friend Pete, on hashtag board feds when the signature is longer than the RP. Ooh, or a giant uh, banner down there. Takes up more space. I like that. Something I haven't seen in a while, but I'm sure it's still out there. At Highlander 4H, people who decide to put pictures in their RP to take up more space than the actual text. People who don't use spell check. Hooked on Hooked Ron Phonics worked for me. <laughs> and people who use color schemes and make the RP impossible to read. At Rick, I don't have any formatting problems. I mean, Rick. You're slipping in two answers there, I see. At Dominic Sanders from EWC, people who use 18 different characters with 18 different colors in one role play, it looks like they shit a rainbow on your screen. <laughs> and Smash, finally, in the Discord... Okay, here's one that's really got me annoyed. Posting a role play with videos or music that play automatically. Bonus points for multiple videos and music in the same piece that play. <laughs> when you got three songs playing at the same time, it's hard to make out even one of them. I like it, guys. Thanks for answering over on the Discord. Of course, you can jump on the Discord from the Twitter profile. And speaking of that Twitter profile, let's head on over there for the next set of answers. At official underscore SCW. Video promo feds. I find most of them to be hot messes of garbage. Ooh, shots fired. At the Rev AJ Morales, anything that pretty much breaks a Google Doc on mobile. <laughs> At Risky Agogo, this is probably really nitpicky. I'm not a huge fan of when people make you link off of their promos. Are you too good to post on the board like the rest of us do? Interesting. I thought that ended a long time ago with GeoCities, but apparently that's still a thing too. I love the, reading these answers because I learned so much about this game. At UWF Chris Spade, match RPs that are long and has 90% of it be character development. Then the very end, the last 10%, which is like a paragraph, even mentions the match or the character they're facing. True story, Chris. Not my cup of tea. At Collect the Bones, a screenplay format. Nice. Also, text block. Yeah, we'll say that one more time. Also, text blocks of dialogue with zero interruption because all wrestlers give 20-minute speeches before glaring at the camera. <laughs> uh, that's fun. At Chris underscore America, act one, or we fade in from black when it's not even taking place on the screen. Interesting. That's a little uh, deeper dive. I like that. At HOF Mike Best, stop using colors for all your text or else go all the way and write your role plays in crayon, you shitty children. <laughs> I'm writing my next Howl roleplay in yellow and red Hulk Hogan font. 
at a underscore man possessed uncentered text unless indented paragraph format all text as one color light board backgrounds and fonts other than georgia or courier new hmm that's very specific at real aj adams i c and o o c nice he's not a fan of uh differentiating the in character and out of character stuff at Faye, the Red Omega, Times New Roman font. Ooh, that's very specific as well. At Hollywood HUD, at Face Devlin, loves centered text dialogue. I've heard that. That seems to be the prevailing rumor that's going around. At Amira Kasori, sorry if I murdered that one, tiny font size used to be cool for some reason. I just hit the control plus button over and over and over again for, until it's huge on my screen and easy to read. I do the same thing with your tweets here that I'm reading right now. For me, I'm not going to struggle to read. I don't care how small you make it. I can just make it bigger. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for the question of the week. Thanks for participating over on the Discord, over on the Twitter machine, at the EFED podcast on Twitter. You guys are the best. Hey, this is Max Kale from High Octane Wrestling. You're listening to the EFED Wrestling Podcast. All right, guys, the EFED Podcast Spotlight segment is back. Again, like I said at the top of the show, we're going to do this as we can. Um, if you want your Fed promoted, hit me up, and we will put together a spotlight together. So this week, the EFED Podcast Spotlight is on the Extreme Hardcore Wrestling Federation. This is an intergender Fed with bi-weekly shows. They have pay-per-views every two to three shows. They are fully written, run by two staff members, with a third who works on graphics and manages the boards. So it is a well-staffed eFed. As far as what kind of Fed it is, well, really it's dealer's choice. If you want to role play for your match with your opponent, you guys can. If you want to work it angled, you can do that too. It's really up to the the fans, the wrestlers, the Fed head. You just work together to decide what you want to do and tell a good story. I'm excited by that stuff. It's a hybrid Fed. I know there's a lot of hate on hybrid feds out there, but uh, I think it's a little intriguing. As far as the rules and word limits go, guys, common sense. Um, respect everyone. No uh, bullying, no ridiculousness. Make sure that you think sensibly before posting your adult content. The EHWF has a three-strike system. Your first offense is a warning. Second offense is a ban. Third offense is extended ban. Uh, I like that. They don't put up with no shit. So if you're going to the EHWF, prepare to play along and not be the tune of your own drummer. So everybody works together there to tell good stories. As far as word limits go, there are none. However you want to write, whatever you want to write, this is a good place to do it. Active championships, they have a world heavyweight championship, a divine championship, the hardcore title, the junior heavyweight championship, and of course the tag team championships. That's one. That one's always my favorite as a member of the Hollywood Bros. Some of their top wrestlers in the Fed are Anna Somnia, Killer Carter, Conrad Robb, Mr. Katz, Brianna Risi, Michael Risi, Cliff Maxwell, Ronan, Zoe McDraven, and Kemick. Interesting. I'd like to see some of those people I'm not very familiar with. You can check out the EHWF over at ehwfv2.proboards.com. They do have about 28 roster members. It is a pretty active Fed and looks like they've been around for some time. So check them out, guys. EHWFV2.ProBoards.com. Happy to promote them here on the show, the Extreme Hardcore Wrestling Federation. Get in over there. They've got a lot of fun people and they are supporters of the show. All right, everybody. I want to give you a little update on our little side project, EWTs, EFED Tees. Really appreciate everyone who's been a customer over there, who's been supportive, who's been retweeting our stuff. I got to tell you, it's been a great response. When we started this, we thought we would have you know a handful of people in feds who want to get a cool t-shirt of themselves, and people are coming in in droves. So really appreciate that. I uh, want to shout out to OCW Fed. want to shout out to Ring the Bell Wrestling. Those guys have been fantastic. They've gotten involved, and now their handlers are all getting involved. So we love to see the reaction. Um, Brian and I have been doing fun stuff with custom logos, with your guys' logos, with all kinds of stuff in between. It's been so cool to see the different aspects of the game just jump into the EWT side. 
So I just wanted to put an update out there that EWT is, is rocking and rolling now. Our shipping times are much, much better. We've got full availability of shirts, colors, and every style. Uh, we can do tank tops, hoodies, the whole gambit. So if you've got an idea for a t-shirt or a hoodie or a tank top for your character, get at us over at EWTs.com uh, or EFEDTees.com. What you want to do is you want to go up to the top right-hand corner. There's a link that says, do you want a shirt or want a shirt? Question mark. Click on that and then go ahead and enter whether or not you have graphics or you don't have graphics. And we'll go from there. EWTs is not a fantasy store. We do sell actual merchandise, real tees. They get delivered to your door with your character stuff on them. So if you want a t-shirt for your character, your fed, your tag team, your stable, or anything else, hit us up at EWTs.com or find us on the Twitter machine at eWrestlingTees. We'd really appreciate you giving that a follow and also on Instagram at eWrestlingTees. We're having a lot of fun. We've got a ton of shirts. We've dropped five in the last two days and we're still rolling. It's been fantastic. So thank you to everyone who's placed an order. Thank you to everyone who's uh, signed up to have a shirt. We are running through a backlog now, so we're busy enough that uh, when you sign up, it will take us a couple days to get back to you as far as design. So we appreciate that. Thanks to everyone who's blowing us up and getting involved. We have a ton of customers, a lot of shirts delivered to doors and nothing but five-star reviews. Love that. Love you guys for that. The reviews have been great. The, the material has been great. Everyone's been retweeting our stuff. I appreciate you guys so much. EWTs is blowing up just like we knew it would because all of you are awesome. Check it out, efedtees.com. Get a shirt for your character. And welcome back to another edition of the EFED podcast interview series. This week, we're joined by one of my great friends in the hobby, Jay, the handler of perfection, a man who's well-known and well-revered. Jay, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Wow, I'm doing a lot better knowing that I'm well-revered. <laughs> <laughs> your name is synonymous with those who were in the uta with those who have been in defiance in the last latter years and as well as high octane wrestling recently and we're going to get into all of that and much more it sounds very exciting and i'm very excited to be here i've liked and enjoyed the podcast you've been doing so far with other handlers so we well, appreciate that yeah, in, man. And, for, and for those of you who don't know out there jay and i have hung out several times and my business travels to Chicago. We met up one time for a beer, and that quickly turned into a good friendship where he's been down here to my house. I've been up to his house. It's been a great time. Yeah, it's been really good. Um, unfortunately, the place that we got our first original beer at has ceased to exist. The Ram. To Damn it. Ram. Ram Brewery. Sad days. Uh, it I'm is trying sad. to get a hold of somebody that worked there to see if I can get any of the merch from yeah. that location. But do it. We'll yeah, see. Otherwise, we'll see you know, worst case scenario, we'll make some new memories in a new place. So no big deal. We as, do like the other one. By as us. we did with short views. Yeah. Yeah. Or that's the, what I'm drinking right now. Or the paradigm shift out here by me. And you, either one works. <laughs> I like both of those places. Well, good deal. Well, we both like wrestling. We both like beer and we both like e-wrestling. So let's get into the interview, Jay. How did you get into professional wrestling? When did you become a fan? So my cousin owned uh wwf smackdown that's how i got into wrestling he owned the video game yeah he owned the video game so one time we were over his house i forget what it was for maybe his birthday or something like that and he had the game and we were playing the game i was like this is a great game i love this game what is this thing wrestling he's like you never watch wrestling <laughs> i know but well my mom at the my mom was my, i love my mom to death but she at the time like when we were younger was like crazy hardcore christian lady yeah so um the attitude era and sable showing her tits and everything really didn't help the cause of us watching wrestling <laughs> no I could, I could see where that might be a no-go for your household no no goal at all no go at all um so so i saw i saw this game and it was great i was like this is a, a wonderful thing and finally we we finally got to see wrestling i think it was like like a raw episode i was like we're and i was hooked i was hooked and it was on uh, i think tna probably at the time tnn TNN, thank you, TNA, uh, TNN, yes, and yeah, it was great, and that's how I got into wrestling, and um, I joined the wrestling team because of wrestling, and I joined the wrestling team thinking that it was actually wrestling. Um, <laughs> and you're gonna be doing moonsaults so, and yeah, I was arm like, bars. Yeah, where's the ring? <laughs> yeah, like 
Oh, is that the thing that Shawn Michaels does? And my the like the kid at the lunchroom table is like, yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> he knew he was gonna fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, he did, and he did. <laughs> he fucked me up bad. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So, how old were you about this day? You're like uh, preteen or teenager? Yeah, I had to be probably like I don't know, just probably going to junior high because there's only a couple years there where. We were following the storylines because what was going on, like Velocity was still a thing. Yeah. Um, heat was still a thing. There was a, there was a uh, point between like Heat, Velocity, Raw, SmackDown. Uh, there was mm-hmm. like, there was another show or two. It was just like almost every other day you could watch something. Absolutely, it was great. Like if you, especially being young and not being saturated with it, like in my old in my earlier years, you know, a lot of people. That I've heard on that kick start off when they're like six and they're seven. Like, what's the first time you saw wrestling? I'm like, oh, you know, WWF in your house. I'm like, I didn't see WWF, like any of this stuff until probably high school. <laughs> yeah, not until like No Mercy or like the the big pay per views, the bloody pay per views. Mm hmm. So it was like, it was cool. It was a great, you know, um, being able to get into it later in life because I think I get a little bit more appreciation for older stuff because i've seen it when i was younger and just saying yeah that's what it was i don't know and not not only that but um you got into a different age so you're looking at it from a different perspective you didn't come in as a hulkamaniac brother as a little kid trying to eat your vitamins and drink your milk you came in as a a rowdy teenager ready for some rowdy shit yeah you know what And, and what was really interesting was um I think me and my brother were talking about this maybe like a couple of months ago and how we didn't even know who Shawn Michaels was or who, yeah, we didn't have no idea who he was like until he came back as part of the NWO. Wow. So like, yeah, like you, you, you missed the whole heartbreak kid run in 96, 97, yeah, 94, 95. Yeah. All of that. I was like, and then when he came back, I'm like, why is everybody so excited? I'm excited. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, he's back. Who? Who's this? <laughs> who is this guy? I don't know why he's back, but it's great. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's it's so cool that you get that different perspective. So who were your favorite wrestlers then? Who caught your eye in the beginning? And uh, then as you kind of got more into it, who did you come to appreciate? So I think the first wrestler I saw or got like really into was Kane. We're nice. Cause yeah. Cause like, um, I just liked his little, like, cause of the video game, right. His stupid little entrance where like, he would just walk and you would get like this fire, but he was just like walking on the backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> but then I saw it actually live, like with the fire and everything going up, like this guy is, is awesome in the video game <laughs> as in real life. Like I love it. So that was my first wrestler that I fell in love with. Um, then as I got older and like, into wrestling it became um kurt angle chris yes. benoit because they're technical masterminds um and then in my later like high school years it was it was absolutely brock lesnar because you have an ncaa champion there you got a guy that's like a beast of, of, of a I'm man a human. yeah <laughs> I'm a human, you know? it's like how can you not and I would just remember, I just remember like everybody on the wrestling team loved Brock Lesnar. Like we would like, when we had to do our team photos, like we all flex our traps, like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> you were the next big thing. That's what you thought. We yeah. were. Like, yeah. Just listening to WW, uh, what was it? The, the, the CD, the anthology CD. And I would just have like Brock Lesnar's theme on, uh, on repeat <laughs> before matches. It's great. Yeah. I get you hype. So I know having been your friend long enough that not only did you have an appreciation for those guys but you had an appreciation for older wrestling. When and how did you get into Nick Bockwinkle? Man, I have, uh, so I had like a little stint when I was younger, like it looked like 18, 19 where I wanted to be a wrestler. So I got into indie wrestling and it was terrible. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, yeah, let's do this big time. And it's like, you do your match, whatever. And you're like, yeah, uh, by the way, you owe us uh, fifty dollars in dues. I'm like, I just got my ass kicked. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but as I was going through that and actually learning the the skills of the ring, one of the trainers there was like, hey, you should check out um, Nick Bockwinkle and the Midnight Express and check out these old school kind of guys because you kind of you know you're a wrestler and if you wrestle like that, it kind of works because you're a smaller guy. Might and stand you know, out a little more. Sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm a smaller guy. Like, yeah, I'm a very small guy. I'm like a tiny toothpick. So it would make <laughs> sense. Like, if I tackled somebody's ankle and kind of like worked their leg a little bit, like a, like a wrestler. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So I, so I watched Spock week. I'm like, this guy is amazing. Like I thought Flair was amazing. Like Flair is amazing. Flair, I, not to say that he's not, but to watch Bachwinkle, he just accentuates just pure wrestling. Like I'm just going to hold you in a hammerlock and now I'm going to transition to a headlock. Now I'm going to transition to the hammerlock I just had. Like he's just, the way he works matches is good. And he, how he cuts promos is even better. Like I just love him. He's a great character. He's smooth in the ring. Everything he does has a purpose. It's it's yeah. really good stuff. And you kind of more introduced him to me because you know I knew of the, the Ric Flairs, I knew of of the the major char- characters and stars, but I didn't know about like the slightly older um, charismatic. I didn't know about the Jesse the Body Venturas, the um, Nick Bockwinkles, the Vern Gagnes, and things of those nature. So it was interesting, you know, meeting you and. And you're introducing me to older stuff than both of us are age wise. Yeah, you know, it, 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 my dad kind of turned. My dad used to like pro wrestling, but he used to love it. Oh, you know, as much as I do now. Uh, but he was younger, and he saw a match at the old Chicago Stadium, um, and it was the Butcher of Vashon. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. Uh, Butcher Vashon, yeah, uh, Luna Vashon's dad. Yeah, so he saw him and um, Cowboy something. I, I don't know. Uh, but he he turned me into old wrestling. It's like, oh, you know, I saw this match when I was younger, and then it turned me off to wrestling because he threw the guy over the rope, and then he started grabbing his eye like his eye got hurt, and that's when I knew it was fake. So he, like, you know, back in k <laughs> like 1960, they killed the k for him. He's like, these. so he always calls it, my dad always calls it, like, that fake-ass shit. Yeah. But um, well, it ruined it he turned him. me on to it, yeah. Well, they ruined it for him. Yeah, they killed the kayfabe. But um, he turned me on to old school wrestling. Cause he's like, oh, what about, have you ever watched this guy wrestle? I'm like, who the hell is that? <laughs> so I'd, I'd look it up. And, you know, and we'd have, and I'd look it up. And then it'd be like this old school wrestling in black and white. I'm like, damn, this is actually really good. Yep. Cause it's not, it's not this spot, the spot fest, you know, spot, spot, spot. It's one move transitions. In, in very smoothly, like if that's what I like about wrestling. And, and people, if you got hit in the face, they acted like they got hit in the face. I mean, have you ever been punched in the face? It hurts. <laughs> well, you know what? For anybody that that wants to take a good look at how wrestling was, especially punches, um, I Nick Bockwinkle, uh, Nick Bockwinkle versus Jerry Lawler. I think it was a five hundred dollars oh. a punch. Nice. And if you watch that, man, they are they are throwing. It looks like they're throwing haymakers. It is beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. Well, good stuff. Well, how did uh, you find the weird, wacky world of e-wrestling? So my buddy in summer camp found, knew that I liked wrestling. And he ran his own e-fed at like 13. Or like fourteen, it was wild. Nice, perfect age for a fed head. Oh yeah, so I found so he he introduced me to that. He's like, yeah, you just make a character and you cut a promo. I'm like, what do you mean cut a promo? He's like, yeah, you know, just write something. <laughs> I'm like, so I could just be like, blah blah. You know, I think my care. I made like some stupid character made called Psycho. So I was like, so I could just be like, <laughs> Psycho goes down to the ring, grabs a mic. I'm going to win. He's like, yeah, that's an RP. I'm like. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I can do this. So then they start. So I joined his fed and I, I don't know. I like wrote like one or two RPs there and during the summer and they all sucked like two or three sentences. <laughs> but like, this is kind of cool. I like, I like this whole like wrestling thing. I'm into wrestling. So I started not Googling cause Google didn't exist then. Um, Probably yeah, ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like e feds. And um, I found all these like little tiny weird groups on MSN when MSN had groups. Yeah. But I found all these weird like little tiny feds and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. So then I made my own fed because like I can do that too. <laughs> and I was a champion of my own fed. <laughs> nice. I see how that works out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Everybody who owns a fed needs to be their own champion at one point. So um, that. That I kind of like died off from that, and for I don't know how I found uh, this place called New Era of Wrestling. And I found I don't know how I found it. Probably Ash G Beans. I found New Era of Wrestling, and it was like a whole like web page. 
like how we have now. But back then, you didn't have that. It was like forums and shit like that. Right. And I saw this. I'm like, what is this shit? Like, there's an actual <laughs> website for this. So I put it in an application. Uh, Sean Edmonds, who was the owner at the time, uh, accepted me in. And that website, their RPs were based on a form called F Wrestling. Oh, nice. And that's how I found F Wrestling. That's how I really dived into the hobby. And FWrestling.com is still around today. Still a forum for e-wrestling and the home of DefianceWrestling.com and I believe NBW. Yeah, I think, is NBW still on there too? I think so. You know what the greatest thing about FW is, is that they keep all the feds in their archives. So you can go back and almost every show from every single fed that existed on those forums. And there is a lot. No doubt. Yeah, it's crazy what... uh, some of those old resource sites. I remember Rough Cut was around forever, and uh, mm. this one F Wrestling, and you know the the archives, the articles, the information they had, the the show archives. It's just incredible. Yeah, Chad does a good job of trying to maintain that stuff. Absolutely. Um, so you got into those E-Feds, You found New Era Wrestling. Were you psycho over there too? No, I actually uh, made a character that in my mind sounded like a great idea. And probably if I was to do it now would probably be better than if I did it at 16. (laughs) But (laughs) I made a character called John Doe. So the character didn't like, he didn't have a name. He didn't have a background. He was uh, the, the the gimmick was that he was released on contract to new era on from a psychiatric ward. And he had amnesia, but I didn't. I didn't play the amnesia gimmick enough. Like I should have, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Because well, you were sixteen, cool. you you were just trying yeah. to come up with something off the off yeah. the wall. You know, this guy doesn't know anything. Yeah, he's just you know he knows he knows how to wrestle. I don't know how he knows how to wrestle. Like I didn't want to do like he's a son <laughs> of somebody that wrestles. Like I don't know. But it worked. It's like one of those movies you see where the guy unlocks a special skill and realizes, holy shit. <laughs> what, what is this I just discovered? I've been around this earth for uh, 20 something years and all of a sudden uh, this pops I'm up. I'm a Kung Fu master, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it was it was, a, it was an okay character. And then um, I, because I found the forums, I went to Empire High Pro uh, that Brunk ran and did a little, I did a stint over there for a while. Like I played that character for a good couple of years and then I got tired of it because it sucked. <laughs> it's, it's i think i think we've all been there yeah the first run we start we start to think we're good and then we look back and we're like oh i wasn't even close i like i was like this is the mark and you're like four miles away bro yeah. <laughs> <Be close. laughs> so i made a new character i was like okay well let's just restart everything so i mean new character called um adrian willard who is the prophecy right and he thought that he was like the prophecy of wrestling and the biggest thing to wrestling. And uh, do you remember, God, what was his name? Uh, do you remember Mordecai from SmackDown? Yeah. Yeah. The all white. Uh, yeah. So I kind of, I can't, remember, I can't remember his real name, but he wrestled around here recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's how far his, uh, his career went. But, um, he, uh, I kind of like based, like, I was like, Oh, that's kind of a cool gimmick. Like, you know, like, uh, like the Messiah kind of thing, but the opposite kinda, of the undertaker. Yeah. Which I love the Undertaker, so I I was like, oh, let's kind of do kind of like that. So I did, and that sucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, so I I did that run. I um both in Empire, in New Era, and um not New Frontier. Um, Paul Miller from F Wrestling had a had a had a fed and I can't think of it off the top of my head. So I apologize, but uh, I ran it over there as well. And you know, I had good, good matches. I got to, uh, I got an RP against Hornet and uh, in true fashion, Hornet won. So <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that happened a lot over there. It, it does. It, you know, I don't know how, you know, he's a great person, great RP here, but uh, Hornet, Hornet always, always wins. <laughs> um, <laughs> that seems to be the running joke. <laughs> um, Hornet cannot, can write no RP and win. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like all right this is great and i killed that character off took a little bit of a break and came back with uh with perfection nice and was he just perfection at first or was he james witherhold um no just perfection so i, I did uh james witherhold as the real name and perfection because i always wanted to have the dynamic that he's not perfection he's a real guy 
Absolutely. I mean, the character itself, uh, now we know, I know him well, or most people who have read your work know him well. He's a, uh, a rich aristocrat type guy. He's, he's your Ric Flair. He's your, he's your uh, Nick Bockwinkle of today. Yeah. I try to, um, I know this is a question later that probably came, that came up in death, but yeah, I try to merge a couple different characters together. And at one point I didn't even know what I was going to write. I was like, what is the shittiest character I can think of? Like, who is the <laughs> shittiest human being? I'm like, some jag off that calls himself perfect. I was, I was like, oh, that's close to Mr. Perfect. I'm like, what about perfection? I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I was like, how would he act? Like a jag off. Perfect. Absolutely. Outstanding. Let's go with it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, you know, it's a fun character to write because um, it's so easy to write. So where did perfection get a start? He got the start over in um, IWF. Brian, who runs... Death now we had a good um run together in IWF. Was this when he was K9? Um no, he was still I think he was still sub cop at that time. Scott Scott Douglas, yeah. Scott Douglas, yeah. And uh Pete who uh, who handles uh MJ Flair and Impulse was handling a different character, which was actually pretty interesting. Um it was like an Egyptian based character called uh Precise Tassetti. I don't know if I'm saying that right, and I apologize to Pete if I if I'm not. Um, that was a really good character. He, we had a good couple uh, works together um, for the IWF championship, and that kind of closed down. I, I believe either Brian or uh, the gentleman who handles Stalker tried to keep it together, but overall, there's too many handlers kind of eh, out of it. Yeah, and you know that, that that's always going to be you know it's it's hard to run a Fed with just NPCs to try to bring people in. Oh, hundred percent. And shout out to uh stalker, Jason, uh, Justin, whatever his name is. I know he goes by 17 different aliases. Mm-hmm. So shout out to him. He's a good listener and a good friend of the show. Oh, he's a great person overall. Um, got to work with him over at IWF, got to work with him over in defiance in my first arc. And when my first stint over there, awesome person to work with, you know, and, I wish there was more in the hobby. Absolutely. And he's he's a guy who's so into the hobby that he's expanded and he's into like the tabletop games and he's into all kinds of stuff. It's good. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, Perfection is now exi- in existence. Mm-hmm. How? What were his some of his early runs, feuds, championships, so on and so forth? So um, in IWF, it was, I believe the first feud was either Scott Douglas or Kerry Kuriyama, I think. And then came Stalker's character, I think. I don't know. It's so crazy to me that, you know, you and I ended up in the same circle in the UTA, and we'll get there, and that's, that, that's going to be fun. But Oh, that's, that's going to be the <laughs> ice. That's the main event. <laughs> yes. So we're going to get to UTA, but before we do, that's how I met you was there, and – that whole group of people and never once did I ever run across Brian. Never once did I hear about him. And then here we are today, some five years later doing a podcast, two podcasts together and uh, starting businesses together and everything else. And we got to hang out, all hang out together. And we all get to hang out at my wedding. That was awesome. Insane. Insane. I'm just going to say like, Brian's an awesome person. I loved hanging out with him. uh, Being so cool. Being a housemate with him for a couple of days. Like that was, it was good. It was good times. Good times yeah, and Brian's the best. Um, but yeah, so um, going from IWF, like I took the main title, which was the Emerald City Championship, because it was based in Seattle. Yep. Or was it the Mountain Rainier? Or was that UTA? I think the Mountain Rainier was like one before that, like the one title lower. Um, okay, your intercontinental, quote unquote. Yeah, because it was a local promotion. So, I so I got this weird email one time. Am I? And it was all uh, spelled incorrectly. And I was like, hey, come join my fad. It's called United Toughness Alliance. And we're only three shows in. And I was like, only <laughs> three shows in. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. Because most now fads you can I've be been a staple, in, yeah. Yeah, like most fads I've been in, like Empire, like I think they were like, they are way deep into their shows. Like CSWA already has an established history. Um, NFW at the time, I, I freshly had it history and it's hard to get into comp- like not companies like efeds like that the people that were there the longest know all the history and are going to use that history in advantages especially in rp so Absolutely. it's easier to be on the groundwork and be like 
why not be everybody's the everybody's even yeah yeah exactly so i was like okay let's join this and that's how i got into uta that's awesome and i have a very similar story when it got to me is i was just got a dm one day hey i'm check check out the uta i read some of your stuff it's pretty cool oh did ben read to you directly like that yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome what fed yeah. were you in before that uh actually oddly enough I was in a couple feds, uh, but this isn't my interview. So we'll. <laughs> no, I, I was in a, a Skyfire Wrestling ran by Jay Jefferson, who is a good follow on Twitter. Uh, he runs Universal Wrestling League, UWL. Mm-hmm. Sorry if I messed that up, Jay. Um, I was working with him, and I was also working with a, a wrestling company called Vow. It was like Visionaries of Wrestling. And it was really dark, deep. Everybody was like a vampire character. Sounds, uh, like, that, sounds like a Lucha Underground almost. It may, maybe it wasn't. I just that's just the way I remember it, I guess. But I was only there for a short period of time, and I was writing what they call the weekly wrap up, and I was li- basically writing a rap lyrics and wrapping up everything that happened that week. I like that. And that's what Ben saw, and he's like, "Hey, come check out my Fed." So Ben found you, the United Toughness Alliance. You got in on the ground floor. I did. And and how did that go from there? Obviously, you were in with the likes of Ron Hall, McDon Hall, and the uh, Crimson Lord himself. Mr. Scott. Very good people. Like them both. Very, very good people. And then there was also the Spectre. Like him as well. Good, good, good guy. Very solid, very honest person to work with. Um, just tells you straight out what he wants and what he likes. And easy to work with. Um, yeah, UTA was a, was a fun little bit, huh? <laughs> it was so much fun. It was oh, so much man. fun. But you were there before me, so let's cover that part. Um, tell, me, tell me about Perfection's Run. Perfections run started with me being like just starting with segments and then building to matches. And then our bed had the idea, let's have perfection, try to get into the arena and get denied because they don't know who he is and get pepper sprayed. I was like, Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do the pepper spray idea. (laughs) (laughs) So we do the pepper spray bit and that went over pretty good the feedback and he's like, okay, so he gets into this partnership with, I don't remember if you remember this, uh, VCW. VCW was their, um, their NXT. Yeah. It was like a little bit before victory, like before he did the second show of victory, maybe he did have the second show of victory. I'm not too sure. When I got there, there were, there were two shows, but there was a VCW champion yeah. and who was Lou Smith, I think. Yeah, so they, they, they were ran, yeah, it was like they're NXT almost. So they did like this partnership and he's like, Why don't we send perfection down to VCW, like as punishment for being just like an asshole? <laughs> Sounds like a great idea, let's do it. So, <laughs> I love it. He is an asshole. And that's that's more fuel. I can use that. I can use the NRP. He's like I'm down here in this shithole, like whatever. So um, he did that, and that just really some. I think those those two instances really cemented the character, because I was able to not only get him pepper sprayed, which really sold him as this like idiot asshole jag off trying to get into a stadium, <laughs> and nobody knows who he is, but he thinks he's bigger than life. And then couple that with him then getting set down after his first match, like yeah, you're not bigger than life. Go go back down to the Indies, you jag off. Like he's being he's being humbled, but. If that didn't happen, if I didn't get sent down and agree with that storyline to get sent down to VCW, I wouldn't have tag team with CBR. Nice. And if I didn't tag team with CBR, Jono would never have messaged me on the forums like, hey, I really liked your RPs. I don't know why you're shitting on my character when we're tag team partners, but do you want to start it? <laughs> <laughs> you want to start, start a stable? Do you want to start a group? Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to start a group. I'm like, he's like, what do you think about adding uh, Strong Jackson then? I'm like, this is a great idea. I love all these ideas. <laughs> you just roll with everything in these. Yeah. I did. I, I well, most things until yeah, most things I rolled with. Some things that like I'm really I, like I'm. I don't know. Like I'm pretty easy to work with. Like if I like an idea and I think it's silly or goofy or just can work well, I'll be like, yeah, let's do that. Let's let's do let's do that shitty idea because it just sounds. We can make it good because we can and make I it love, fun. Yeah, we can make it fun. I love shitty ideas. But nobody ever, nobody likes hitting me up with shitty ideas because people think that I have a bad rap. But anyways, well, well I hit you up with a shitty idea. To create yeah, all, stable, yeah, so. it, it's <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so he, yeah, so it just spiraled into this whole thing. 
So we got me, Jono, and Mike Bell, who handled... So you uh, got Mike Bell, Sean Jackson, the mental rapist. Yes, I love the name. <laughs> you got Jono, who handled Claude Baptiste Rainier. Awesome guy. Uh, CBR. Yes, great guy. Still in the lads chat today. Love him. And um, and then you had yourself, Mr. Perfection. Yes, yeah, so I was like, you know what we need? We need a female character. Yes. We need we need to offset this. Except for it's not so, you know, we need the fourth person... So it's like four horsemen, but we don't need a guy. We need a chick that can hold her own. And at that time, it was KBT. Like she was just tearing it up. I'm like, and she had a goth character, like super heel. I'm like, that's who we need. So we got what's her. The, uh, what's the case stand for? It was Catherine Belmont Thomas. Yes, Catherine Belmont Thomas. And I was like, that's who we need. We need that her. And they were like, absolutely. We like let's get her. So we told Ben, I'm like, hey. Uh, we want to do this, like, you know, uh, and we want KBT. He's like, fine, you know, you can have KBT too. And that's how it came to be. So we didn't, if it, that actually happened, I think that was like a month of planning of getting everybody in line and figuring out what was going on. I think that John came up with the name in like an hour. He's like, we're calling ourselves <laughs> Dynasty. I'm like, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So the and dynasty name, was born. Yeah, John came up with that name like instantly. Like dynasty, I'm like beautiful. Yes, do it. So, um, too. So we did like a little bit of planning, like how, like how we're gonna do this, and it just so happened to line up that I was winning the Ring King um, tournament. So I at that pay per view, Ben didn't really tell us what was gonna happen. He was kind of like more like, okay, we're going to do it after the pay-per-view. We'll do like the big dynasty reveal kind of like at Russell show. Yes. To start off the new arc going into the next pay-per-view cycle. That way we have this big stable, but I won ranking against Madman Zelensky. And in that match to have perfection, when uh, comes out dynasty and it's, it's beautiful because this is great. It is beautiful, and you've got the four-person stable at this point. It's a good storyline. Madman Zelinsky is in play, yes. and he's going to be vital to the growth of Dynasty, even on even if it's on the back end. And um, I think this is kind of where I was inserted into the picture, or at least very close to, because when I came in, you were a four-person stable, mm-hmm. and then and then quickly added a fifth. Yeah, so I think the first fifth, was it you or was it... No, uh, no, no, Mark. The no, no, nope, nope. Try again. Think of our masked buddy. Oh yeah, La Flama Blanca. La Flama Blanca, yeah. our good friend Will. Oh, fuck, Love I, you, Will. How do I even forget the kick ho- heard around the world? I'm just jumping ahead because you know why? Because in there, somewhere in between there, I think KBT dropped out and made us back a four person stable. Yeah, so you were a five at one point. Yeah. So here's what, as far as what I remember is when I come in, it's Sean Jackson, CBR, KBT, and Perfection. Um. Madman Zelinsky, when I come in, is feuding with Will or is tag team with Will yes. as uh, Madman Zelinsky and La Flama Blanca. Mm-hmm. Somehow, some way, Dynasty gets La Flama Blanca to turn on Madman, the kick, super kick her around the world. La Flama Blanca joins Dynasty and immediately his stock is raised significantly. And as a young upstart in UTA at this point, I see this and say, well, I don't know who La Flama Blanca is, but obviously that's a pretty big turn. Yeah. So, I did. I don't. I don't know if we had a chat room with Ben in regards to the the turn. I think we did because we usually had it with. Like I know we had it for sure for uh, Mark's character that we did with the truth. So I yep. do believe that like Ben reached out to us like, "Hey, we're going to turn Lafonda Block a heel. What do you think about him coming into Dynasty?" And I was like, "Fuck yes," because. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, because I in, I know my character hated Madman Zelinsky. Yes, yeah, so it makes sense on that front. Yeah, that now I have another angle to shoot at him every time we're in a segment or an RP. I can use that. Secondly, I I think I reached out or I reached out to Will or so, somebody made like a comment like, "Who's your favorite character in UTA?" And this was before we brought him in, or even Ben reached out to me about it. I'm like, my favorite character in UTA is Lafon Blanco. 
and will reach out to me like on a side chat. Like my character really is your favorite character. I'm like, yeah, bro, you do good work. Like I don't know if he. It's I would do the same thing. Someone said, hey, I really like the perfection character. I'll reach out. I'm like, hey, yeah, man, thanks for saying Thank that. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate that. that. Yeah. So you know he did one of those, and I was like, yeah, I really like this character. So even then, I liked the character. When Ben approached me about it, I said, absolutely, hell yeah, easy yes, yes. He can hold his work. He can hold his own. He does his segments. He puts in the time. I, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I was looking for. And people that, you know, can work and jive with the group. And it wasn't just my call. You know, CBR was like, fuck yes. You know, Mike was like, hell yeah. KBT was like, absolutely. And Ben was like, how do you, how should we bring him in? And like, and we're like, I don't know, figure it out. It's like, all right, I'll, I'll get it. I'll figure it out. And that's, I guess maybe he worked with Will or whatever, but they figured it out. So it just worked. It was, beautiful it was oh, thing. so good. I think, you know, I think, Dynasty as a group was and is probably the biggest stable in EFADIM. Like it, it, everybody, like if, if you think about it, everybody uses a, the. If you think about shake hands, everything yep. form Dynasty. <laughs> it's very well known even now. It's almost a meme in in e wrestling. Yeah, so now. and it's and it's great to be from to be in that from the ground up and. And then for you and Stevie and everybody to when I left to to take it and make it even better was is great. You know, this and there's not there's only what like seven people that can say that they've been part of that. So absolutely, we'll we'll get into me and Stevie here in a minute. But I want to go back <laughs> and I want to touch on Madman Zelinsky. I want to touch on that feud yeah. because from what I understand, Madman Zelinsky was probably uh, enemy numero uno for Dynasty. So yeah, Madman Zelinsky was definitely. Enemy number one. It just started with that Ring King final. Um, it kind of evolved into the glorious chat room that is <laughs> that is that was UTA. <laughs> but he like he really like as a, I think as a person and in character really hated the perfection character, and it showed. And I would just press the buttons and it just made a good feud on my this on, on my side. I think it did because. Everything that I would say he would react to in a segment. I was like, yes, thank you. Like, I want you to react in this fashion because we're getting, we're getting a good, good heat going here between us. And then it came to the ring king and I won and he was a little bit heat about that. And then uh, I won't forget after ring king and, and I won the UTA championship for the first time, Ben came up to me. He's like, what do you think about having a rematch on the next wrestle show? And I figured, well, I'm I'm the champ, right? Like I I've kind of went with everything you've said during this whole time. You know, don't I get to call some? It's sh- worked out well. Yeah, I get to call some <laughs> shots, right? So I was like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> He's like, okay, well I'll do something else. I'm like, oh wow, I I, I get to have those kind of shots where I get to say yes or no things. So I'm like, this is great. I love being champion. You just took your shot yeah. and just said, well, fuck it, I'm gonna try to say yeah. no. <laughs> so that's that's when. Things started to spiral um, as far as me being champion, uh, especially when I started to irritate Ben by buying everything in the UTA shop. <laughs> <laughs> and asking him constantly to update it. <laughs> yeah, asking constantly to update it. Like his whole PM box was filled. So, I, so for people that don't understand, Ben had a UTA shop. And if you bet on matches, you would get this virtual currency. So this virtual currency was good for asking for matches controlling a show asking for a chair shot in a match there's like a various little things you can buy with this this cash shop well i bet on myself all the time with my, all my dollars because because what because what you would do is you would take the dollar amount allotted to you and you could gamble on any match on the card exactly so i would say i have two hundred thousand dollars in virtual cash i'm betting two hundred thousand dollars on perfection and I won, and I won like twenty matches in a row. Like, but at that time it was like ten matches in a row. So I had like all this freaking money. Like, I I bought the first Russell show to be a GM on, which was awesome. We had a good time with that. I don't know if you remember that. I remember a lot of those shows. I don't remember specifically what was booked, but I remember a lot of the this person the GM for so the we night. Had Tommy Ace, the commentator, to be, or was it somebody else that booked him? I don't know. Maybe it was us that booked him, and. It's as a commentator. So me and Will wrote the RP for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. But um, I flooded Ben's messages with like 50 like Dynasty Controls Russell Show <laughs> like messages. Like it just bought them all. 
and bought, bought it, yeah, fifty shows in a row or something. Like that, so he shut it down. Um, <laughs> so that added to my awesome. that added to my little check marks of of not being not being fun to work with with Ben. <laughs> But yeah, the Man Manzalinski feud was was good. It it led to the awesome stable of the Shoot Kings. Yeah. Um, Dynasty actually formed as a tag team, so that's what allowed me and CBR to tag team in UTA at BCW, and that allowed me and Will to tag team and win the UTA championships. So thank you, Man Manzalinski. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. Yeah. And that's, uh, brings us right, right about to where you and I started interacting for the first time. Um, when I had formed WTFC. Yes. With Doozer. With one, with one Mr. Doozer, one Mr. Bobby Dean, and one Mr. William Haynes. Which was awesome because I always liked the, was it the golf cart? Was it the golf cart? Yes. Yeah. We had a golf cart we rode around in and a Roomba that mm-hmm. played music. <laughs> Bobby Clean. Okay. But yeah, so I, I tried to create a face stable to oppose Dynasty, and as has been the pattern in my EFED career, I was basically ignored by the top group as we tried to get them <laughs> and turned into uh, a fun feud between, I want to say, La Fama Blanca, Will Haynes. They had some sh- uh, some fun matches. I went up against uh, Mike Be- Mike Bell a couple times and lost every time. I don't know if we ever went against each other. I don't think we have. Um, there was never a perfection, Mikey. Maybe, maybe a tag match or something, but never a straight up one on one. But um, you were still there, and I was. WTFC had run its course or was running its course, and I was approached by both yourself and one Mister Will. La Flama Blanca about the possibility of joining Dynasty. Yeah, that was actually probably our smartest move. So before that move, I think we tried to bring in the truth character that I was talking. About. Yes, Simon. Simon, something. yeah, whatever. And that was it. It wasn't a bad idea at the time because he was writing strong shit. And I was like, Ben wanted to give him some more oomph. And I figured, well, you given us, you know, Dynasty, you let us kind of run the shit a little bit. You've given us a little bit of creative control and direction where we can call our shots. So play a little bit fair. You want us to bring in a guy? Let's bring in a guy. Like, we'll work with him. We'll do whatever we need to do. We're established enough to be able to do that. So we bring him in, and it worked out for, like, I think, like, two shows, maybe three shows, and he just poofed. And I was like, it it kind of sucked because – we were we were trying to build the angle. Like it wasn't just me. Like John was working hard on the angle, and he was. I think he was taking a little bit of break. Like he put like CBR in rehab for like a couple months in there. And Mike was working, like trying to figure out, like you know, how can I work Simon into like my segments to build him, and so it doesn't seem like he just came out of the group. Like how do we get him involved in this rich kind of stable, and we have this crazy mayhem character and then he just disappeared <laughs> i was like well what the fuck so what do we do now it's, i don't know who who was it's somebody inside it was either mike will or John, one of those three was like what about mikey I'm like mikey i'm like like mikey i'm like, I'm like oh, yeah i mean he's a good character like you know you have the gimmick of him being the Hollywood, I think you had still had the Hollywood C C-list, list. You're starting the C lister thing, or uh, it wasn't yet. I think uh, at the time he was he was a uh, one hit wonder on the rapping, right? He, yeah, 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 yeah. Previously yeah. a one hit pop wonder, rap pop wonder, or something. And I think when he got into Dynasty, he started the C lister. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, I needed to take a break, but right before Dynasty. So yeah, this is what happened: is I needed to take a break from e wrestling. Mm-hmm. I was I was burnout. I told Ben, hey, I need uh, a couple months off. And he said, no problem. Um, and he wrote an angle where Mikey got cast in a movie because he was Babyface when I, when I left. And I had written Babyface my entire UTA run. And so he had Mikey got cast in a movie. He's going to be Mikey McFly in the new Back to the Future remake. And so I took a break. And when I was on break, WTFC continued without mm-hmm. me. And that's when you guys approached me while I was on break about, hey, 
What do you think about? Uh, oh, first it was Will. I think. Hey, I really like your stuff. Yeah, because I think Will. <laughs> I, it, it, I think it was Will in the chat that kind of broached the conversation. He was brought just brought it up. He was like, "What do you guys think about Mikey unlikely taking Simon's place?" It was like something around along those lines, and, I, and everybody in chat was like, "Yeah." <laughs> yes well we can we, like that would be great it would be a great fit you know he's a one hit wonder has you know we can do all that stuff and he then probably reached out to you and worked everything behind the scenes with ben and yep and then it was first it was will hitting me up and then it was you and then at first i was hesitant and then you I were said, pretty hesitant it, i do it. remember that because you're kind of like uh, i don't know because i think you think i think you thought you we were going to screw you over I absolutely <laughs> thought you were going to screw me over. I said, here I am trying to create the number one face stable, and these guys are coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden to get me to turn on their side. I can and, see it. And now, and now I saw what was happening with you know the Simon character, and I didn't think that was going to be honest with me, you. I, I'm pretty sure somewhere in that chat was the conversation of how this would kill WTF or WTFC. <laughs> Well, I was the like leader, how, so of course. Yeah, I was like, how, yeah, how can we kill this? I'll just bring Mikey in. <laughs> <laughs> well, long story short, it worked, and I turned on Will Haynes, made my comeback at Wrestle UTA, came in to save him from a Dynasty beatdown, and then did the classic heel turn where I had jumped in the beatdown. Yep, and then I shook hands and formed Dynasty. Yep, and then I got suspended. And then you were kicked out pretty quick. <laughs> I was kicked out like that. And then the next week, Kendricks joined. Yes, to take my spot. And he did a wonderful job in replacing me. It was Mikey Unlikely and Kendricks joined back to back. So at this point, KVT had also dropped out. Mm-hmm. Perfection had been suspended for Twitter violations. And ben, I was, <laughs> ben told me I could not rejoin Dynasty. And so it was left with La Flama Blanca, Sean Jackson, CBR, Mikey Unlikely, and Kendricks. And since we were the two newbies, Ben started booking us in tag team matches. And lo and behold, the Hollywood Bruvs were born. Beautiful. I love it. It's so beautiful. See, everything, everything great happens with Dynasty. It does. Shake hands. Shake it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So uh, when you came back with Perfection, mm-hmm. it, was short, it was short-lived in the UTA. It was. So I came back. And I was put into the program with Pin Smith, I believe. Yes. Uh, ben reached out to me when I was at work. Like, you need to call me right now. You need to call me right now. Um, I forget who dropped out. I think it was John Sector dropped the title and it was vacated. Or there was some kind of vacation of the Wildfire Championship. And Ben reached out to me, blowing up my Skype. Call me right now. So I called him on my way to work. He's like, I want to bring perfection in. And I just want to hand him the title. <laughs> I'm like, you, I'm still suspect. Like I'm still suspended. He's like, yeah, we're going to just wave all that. I want to bring perfection in and hand him the title. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, and then, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. That's great. He's like, but here's the caveat. If you, if we're going to do that, you can't rejoin dynasty. Oh, I'm like, uh, they're doing fine without me. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that and um the day of my title defense the RP period I did a we hide Ben for some reason gave me the password for his radio show and me and John Sector hijacked the radio and I got completely smashed <laughs> on that radio program and forgot to post my RP. So Will was kind enough and had my password and posted my rp for me yeah i cheated so <laughs> <laughs> so he did he posted it and i saw it i'm like oh man there's bolds missing in this rp and that's usually what i do and if ben sees there's no bolts he's gonna probably get suspicious as to why there's not any so i went in really fast and and bolded all my my stuff and i tail-sized all the accentuations that perfection would make and i told ben i'm like hey just to let you know I went in after went in after I posted my IP and just made a little bolds and changes. I told Pin Smith, I was like, "Hey, by the way, made a little bolds and changes. You know, if you're not okay with that, you know, just tell Ben and I'll take the loss." He's like, "No, it's all cool, bro." It's like I read the RP, it's the same RP. Ben reads the RP, same RP. So what does Ben do? He posts on the forums. Should his RP count? <laughs> 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 and every 
everybody's like, and everyone says no. no. <laughs> so I lost the wildfire championship, and um, I figured what happened. I won some kind of tournament, and I got to face Eric Dane in season's beatings right before I think the Fed shut down because Ben took a yep. little bit of hiatus. That was the last paper. Mm-hmm. And headlined it. It's perfection versus Eric Dane. I lost that match. Eric Dane retains the title. And, and and that was that was the end of the stint. So I retired the character and I took a little bit of break and then I had this weird asshole uh message me on, on Skype like, <laughs> uh, hey, you wanna get back into our team? I'm like, Oh yeah, probably. And so I joined How. I don't know who that I don't well, know who that guy was. Well, you you skipped your first defiance. Oh run. yeah, I did skip my first defiance run. So after after UTA, I hit you yeah. up and said, "Hey, everybody's going to defiance." Let's That's go. true. You see, you did it twice. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to continue. Yeah, to, to stop listening to me. <laughs> well, we're friends, so it's probably never. So, <laughs> never. Yeah. Um, yeah, the first defiance run was great. Um, I actually loved defiance. Uh, the one thing I I really liked about defiance was just not having to RP. RP yes. and just takes a toll out of you after doing it so many times. The benefit of UTA was that it was on a two week schedule. So you could do like one RP one week and then the next RP the next week and then maybe mm-hmm. have a couple shows off. So really you're RPing probably once a month. I remember and that's a big break from when I RP'd back in F wrestling, where there was no RP caps. So you had, over there you had two RPs and that was it. I was like, okay, that's fine. But that burns you out. There's only so much yep. shit you can talk. Only so only only so many settings you can exactly. make. Exactly. <laughs> you just give like I just gave up at one point. I'm like, I'm just gonna have perfection drink and smoke cigars the entire time because <laughs> Who cares? Um, so I went to Defiance, and that was actually it was really fun. I enjoyed it. I never did Angle before. I think I joined Defiance one time, and I didn't get even get into an arc because I was so confused on how it worked. And that was probably when I was seventeen. It, but when joining as Perfection, there was so much creative freedom. Like I didn't have to restrict myself to what a segment was a week before, because that's usually how I structure my RPs. Like. How, what happened in the show before and how that develops my character. And it wasn't that restrictive. I got to work with uh, Codename Reaper on the first arc. I got to start working with Andy, and then I had an election come up and had to do that. So, Yes, yeah, so you are a local politician in your hometown, which is a, a lot of fun, and we've had a lot of good talks about that over the years. Um but uh, you, your defiance run didn't last very long, unfortunately. But you did come over with the group, so you kind of had that. Um, you you were still an alum, so you took a long, long break. Despite my many, many attempts, both in person and over Skype, to get you back in the you game. and Brian both in person at the wedding. You absolutely refused. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I was like, no, I'm retired. And so after working on you, finessing you for about two years. <laughs> I got you. I said, hey, I got Stevie back in the game. We're going to reform the Hollywood Bruffs. By the way, I got Murr back in the game. He's going to join us for a three-man stable, and I want you in to be our fourth man. And that was awesome. Uh, the entire idea sold me right off the bat. I don't even know why. Like, I, th- I think there was a point there where I was getting a little bit of an itch because I was texting Will, and Will's like, yeah, I might go back to Defiance. I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of miss doing that kind of thing. And then you were messaging me at the same time. You're like, why don't you come to how? I'm like, oh, I don't know about how, but it worked. And so it worked out. But uh, what happened before, right before that was in 2018, I believe it was, the lads converged on Chicago. The big takeover. And the big takeover. We had uh, Stevie Ferruja, our good buddy, Mr. Kendricks, Mr. Murr came over as well. They both flew over from the uh, United Kingdom. And I drove in, and we all shared a great week together over in Chicago. Yeah, I got assaulted. Um, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> One Mr. Sammy Callahan has followed me around the world and, and fucked with all of my friends. I think, I think it's a purpose. He's like, hey, this that Mikey unlikely character. Let's go fuck with his guys. <laughs> I swear to God. For people who don't know, we went to London the year before in 2017. Myself, Murr, and Stevie... And we went to a wrestling show, and Sammy Callahan spilled a beer all over me and Murr. Just spilled my it's beer. It's on camera, too. It's on camera. I'm in the front row. And he spills my beer all over the place. So, Q, one year later, we're in Chicago 
for is it APW? Uh, AEW, yeah. A A A W. Yes. Great, great little promotion there in Chicago. Love those guys. You should check them out. A lot of fun. They have the little Titan Tron, the whole ramp, little backstage sags, the whole the whole lot of fun. So good. So we get to that show and we're there and it's it's like a bar set up and it's a great atmosphere and it was pretty cool. We're having a lot of fun. Sammy Callahan and uh, his crew come out for a match and they brawl into the crowd. And what's Jay doing? He's being a fucking dickhead like he is, and he's yelling at the guys. <laughs> because that's what you do. You're a wrestling fan. You yell at the wrestlers. And what's Sammy Callahan do? He puts his hands on you and pushes you down through the seat. I still think I should have sold it and bumped. I still <laughs> think I should have bumped it. But you know, you got immediately right back up and said, Whoa, you're a fucking pussy. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? He asked me to hit him, and I'm too sm- I'm smart enough to know if I if I hit him, I'm gonna get lit up. Yes, I'm gonna get by lit up. More than oh, one person. Oh, absolutely. Like his his guys are gonna Pull me over that little folding chair and, and light me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I just dared him, like, no, pussy, you hit me first. Be the tough guy you say you are. And then, you know, they just. And then he, and did. he did. <laughs> <laughs> so Sammy Callahan is our mortal enemy, just for future reference. I, I actually I actually find it kind of funny because uh, they pulled me out of the show to have Sammy apologize to me, and I wouldn't accept his apology. <laughs> and he goes you're a fucking asshole i'm like see this is what i'm talking about you have a poor working attitude man <laughs> <laughs> the politician you came out you're ready for bait. <laughs> uh, i love it love to see it so we we got the lads together and i think that was also the precipice to get you back in the game we, we spent the week together we had a great time and i said all of us are here we just need you that's true. I think we were at the uh, the B and B, hanging out, and you're just like, "Listen, we're all here. You know, all we need." I think we even called Chris Ross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Chris Ross! Every time I get drunk on a vacation, I call Chris Ross. It's true. But yeah, you're trying to weed, weed me in there. I was like, I don't really know, but I think that that I think that conversation, like just all of us being in that room, just hanging out, just chill, kind of brought together that atmosphere to start 24k and that you know that's off you know you and andy and stevie that kind of just brought that together absolutely so we got uh, the boys together in a skype chat i said guys i want to rp again the boys want to rp let's go somewhere where the where the competition is great let's go somewhere we we know well and uh we ended up in high octane wrestling one that we had heard of for years one that had invaded the UTA, suppose. Uh, I mean, not really invaded, but Mike Best, John Sector, um, Colin, Cal- yes, Cecil, uh, Cecil, Cecil Worth Farthington. I think they had a all hopped ball. over. They did. The uh, were they the machine? Yeah, the machine. Or was, uh, Justin's or, yeah, I think they okay. were the machine. Yeah. So they were the machine in the UTA, and um, so we kind of knew of them from then. We had a great big feud with them back in the day: Dynasty versus the Machine versus the Defiance guys, and. Um, a lot of fun and ends up to where we join high octane wrestling as the new stable. We call ourselves 24 K because we're all solid gold. Baby. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can get your 24 K t-shirt over at efedtees.com. Check it out right now or E W You know, I bought mine. So it is on the it's way. On the way. I mean, it's not, but it, but it will be. I soon. can't. I cannot. I, you know, I'm going to sport it just like I'm sporting my Hollywood Brub shirt right now. So, yes. by the way, this I'm just going to comment upon this shirt. This it is very comfortable. Like this is like premium cotton shit. That is the most comfortable shirt I've ever it had. I so, swear to God, it is. Just, it, it is good. It is nice. It's a nice fit. It is really nice. And you and you can get that and much much more over at ewts.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm writing an RP. <laughs> the showmaster. I love it. So we joined High, High Octane Wrestling as the, the stable 24K, and that was back at the end of February this year, 2020. And uh, we had a hell of a run the last five months. Um, unfortunately, you recently dropped out of High Octane. Yeah. Do, do you want to touch on High Octane and your experience there? Interesting, Fed. I enjoyed being there for the brief stint that I was. I think, uh, I think it wasn't really a good fit as far as atmosphere. Um, and I think that's just everybody. Everybody has their own little kind of atmospheres that they look for when they go to E-Feds, and I, it just didn't really fit with me. Uh, the fat had to leave over there is really good. I think he quashed a lot of fears that many people had in regards to how 
uh, when we were in UTA. I know yep. that that was a big thing. Like, oh my God, don't go to how, don't do this, don't go to how. Especially for man, well, back yeah, back in 2015, 2016, we looked at how like it was the devil's playground. It was you could go over there if you want your character murdered. Yeah, exactly. But going you know, going there and him being so willing to get us over so fast and being and, and giving us the opportunity to build off Dan Ryan and Mike Best and all those guys. Uh, not many people would do that. No, it was awesome. It was a great, great debut, great start in the U- in not UTA and high octane. Being able to tag with Andy, never tagged with Andy. I mean, though we had a couple, you know, only a couple matches with each other. Um, which was ta- becoming tag team champion. Became tag team champion. So I held, I held the title and how. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and then, then, and then Stevie and I lost them for That's you. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. When I did exactly what you did and got super drunk on a podcast <laughs> and forgot to post an RP. <laughs> it's, it's funny how that all comes back. As the world turns, my man. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. We won him back, or Andy won. Andy won his half back, which is uh. He did, and th- and then the Hollywood Brubs won him. Yeah, back. but no, I think I think how is a is a is a good place. Um, I think Lee's a, a fair fathead. He's willing to give your character opportunity. I think that as an RP fed is probably the strongest RP fed in, in the hobby to be, to be honest. I, I can't think of another one. There's a lot of great role players there. There's a, a lot of great talent mm-hmm. there. I mean, top to bottom, even the bottom of the card is, is a lot of really good. The people. solid got people in, in that can write w- wonderful, um, that really take their characters to heart and they, they do it and not, and they've been around. They've been around. They're still around, so still around, yeah, still kicking. So yeah, it was a. It's been a fun run for perfection in the high octane. Like you said, it wasn't a great fit. We enjoyed having you in twenty four K, and uh, recently, as of last week, and by the time this airs, you will have debuted in Defiance Wrestling. Again. Yes, I would, and I'm very excited for this next run. Um, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I think there's a lot of distraction in the first one. I'm, I've tried. I've been trying to read through the last couple arcs to get a handle of where it is. <laughs> I got overzealous. I know. I, I told you this yes. earlier. I was like, I, 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 let me go back to. Uh, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the last five shows tonight. Yeah, son. and I was like, oh, I forgot that these are super huge shows, which is awesome because there's no RPs, so it makes nope. sense. You get everything out. On yeah, the show, it yeah. makes sense, and I like. I, I just started getting back into the uncuts, which just adds that little that little extra layer of uh, deliciousness to the shows. So, um, yeah, I'm excited, man. Like I was excited to RP again. And then I started RP. I'm like, I hate RP. <laughs> <laughs> but now, th- then I started thinking, I'm like, well, you know, those RPs can really just be transitioned to segments. So, well, and Brian was been recruiting you trying to recruit you to defiance since my wedding. Yes. And I've been trying to recruit you to Defiance since 2016. Mm-hmm. So it has worked out. It worked out great. It worked out and I'm well. excited to work with everybody. I, 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 like the Fuse Bros, just that whole atmosphere with their characters. Just I, One arc, I want to just jump into that just to be a part of it because it's just fun times. It's just Everything there is fun. It is fun, and people are are great, and it's a it's a fun place to be. So, if you're looking for a good angle fed, check out defiancewrestling.com, where you can find Perfection, Mikey Unlikely, and quite a few other characters you very well may be familiar with. Yeah, join me. Join me. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. That kind of covers your e-fed career. Yeah, Jay, it's pretty. I, I would it's say. not 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 that exciting, but whatever. I disagree. It's very exciting. Oh, I appreciate it. And uh, we're going to transition over here to. The questions portion of the show as I light this thing. <laughs> Don't mind the noises. All right, up first on the Twitter machine, we got at user poets, our good friend Pete. I like Pete. Question one How do you feel about Rick banging your mom? I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I Rick, still have no I still have no idea what he's talking about. Rick didn't post this week, but he typically answers the interview question. And it's question one is is your mom hot? No, my mom. My mom's a a sixty year old Puerto Rican woman. His question too is: Is she single? Sometimes. Okay. So <laughs> for for Rick from me, that's his questions of the week. So now we can lead into Pete's. How do you feel about Rick banging your mom? 
Uh, not that great. Rick. I don't, I, don't, I don't like hooking up my mom. If you were trapped in a room with Gert Derm, Cern, and Philly Bro, who would you ally with to murder the other? Probably the Philly Bro. <laughs> For sure. You would, you would partner with him or murder him? I'd partner with him, and then after we murder the goddamn son, I'd be like, where's his dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> up next is uh, our good friend Scoot Stevens on Twitter. You can I find love him that guy. at Scoot Stevens. On a scale of manly to manly, how manly are you? Very manly. Very, very manly. Number two, who is the most ungrateful of all the ungratefuls? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm going to say La Fama Blanca. Oh. He is so ungrateful. He's the king of the ungrateful. He is. Question three, have you ever written a baby face? And if so, how did it go? Terrible. I did write one baby face. Uh, the character's name was called El Gordo Grande. And it was a fat luchador. So it was like <laughs> you put Bobby Dean in a lucha mask. Perfect. And I would take his RPs and write them in Spanish and use a translator to translate them to English. So that they were poorly written? They were very poorly written. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do that all on your own. Just kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one. For, okay. Scoot Stevens posts three more questions. These are the, uh, the actual Scoot Stevens questions. Mm. You like turnips? I think we all know about that, that I've never had a turnip. I haven't had baked turnips, poached turnips. Uh, sauteed turnips. I've never had a turnip before. Never no turnips for you. No turnip. Everybody in the club getting turnips. Yeah. Question two: We fight in deaf fire ants. Absolutely, with Jack Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> bring him in. Bring him we in. Little, we all get little bruises. Free Stevens. No. <laughs> <laughs> no freedom oh. for you, bro. No Amistad. No, oh, there you go. Very good. We're going to kick it over to the Discord side of things. Mm. we got quite a few questions. Up first is our good friend Fuzz, friend of the show, Patreon member Fuzz. What are your thoughts on e-fetting currently? I had to beat Meg to the punch. So I haven't really traveled outside the realm of F-Wrestling and UTA in how Defiance, which is part of F-Wrestling. So it feels about the same to me. You're not really a big part of eFed Twitter. No. So everybody that I've, every Fed that I've been with, been in rather, has had somebody from F Wrestling or the hobby in it. So it's always Someone. felt, yeah. It's always felt like I've been in the same place, just a different company, if that makes sense. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, yeah, it all feels the same. I, I would like to see new people in, but I don't think new people are so much geared into typing out no it's the video game it's a bit yeah it's a cost stuff which is cool i like that i know me and you were talking about that for for a minute like it'd be kind of cool if you can do call and then have like you or i or you know a fat head or two do the actual commentator for that call yes like that would be dope it, yeah it, it would be fun and some some people really do that i know jcs over at ocwfed.com he does a great job of doing commentary over his fed um there was a guy percival conrad prince um, over at HWA. I think he's taking a break right now, but he's a lot of fun on commentary. There's some good guys out there who are really good at this stuff and just, you know, they set up on Twitch and they have a lot of fun. Yeah, I, like, that's how removed I am from the hobby. Like, I just know my little tiny niche. Yep. Know that that's going on is, is really cool. Really cool. I'd like to see more of that. Up next is Megan, 5BW owner. You know her from the UTA days. What was your favorite thing about being a part of the UTA? I think this is everybody's answer, right? Well, just watching the chat room go the into circus. Abs- yeah, watching it go to complete shit every single day. <laughs> <laughs> it was shit, yeah. Uh, it, it was the greatest Wild West fed there ever was. Oh, it's it's just complete shit show. Uh there's like 50 side chats of a side chat of a side chat. <laughs> yeah, everybody's playing games. Ben quit the chat room and had to get added back into the chat room. It's just a giant mess of amazing. Who did you want to feud with but didn't have the chance to? Uh, La Fama Blanco. So the characters faced each other uh, before LFB joined Dynasty. And that steamed off that BCW run when I came back. So I came back for a match against Aldous McDonald. And I, I, if, I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, I beat Alf, or La Fama, or Elvis McDonald down and LaFon Blanca saved him 
and Freshie did the whole you know ramp walk out. Alfie cut a couple promos. I cut a couple promos on segments, and that led to us meeting at the Ring King matches, and I beat him there in the Ring King matches, and we never did anything after that. Like he texted me uh, with like Madman and kind of shot at Dynasty a little bit here and there, but we never really got into an actual feud together. Uh, but but in retrospect, if we did get into a feud right. together, he would the kick around the world probably wouldn't have happened, and all that would have been, wouldn't have happened. So it kind of all worked out. So what we do now is we start working on Will to bring back LFB so we can have that. Yes, exactly. But LFB has to come in the face. Sorry, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Up next is JCS, the guy I just mentioned over at OCWFed.com. If you want to get into co- competitive car wrestling, check out OCWFed.com, one of our sponsors on the show. Who was your most enjoyable dance partner, a.k.a. the person you enjoyed working with the most? And besides me. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll exclude all of Dynasty from that because, you know, you're not really in a stable unless you enjoy writing with people. Right. Um. Easiest person I ever worked with was was uh, Stalker Codename Reaper uh, Justin. Uh, the guy is just a solid writer. He always goes out of his way to put over your character, and when you try to give him some heat back and try to build him, he's like, "No, no, no, no. Let's just let's just keep going in the direction we are." <laughs> um, unless you're the Hollywood Bros, then unless- <laughs> he wins your he wins your tag titles, and he quits the Fed the next week. Easiest guy to work with. Um, I had a great art with him. He made it easy to bring transition perfection from like an audience member where like, you know, like why is this guy here to bringing him into an actual program and yeah, just solid. Loved that arc. Loved working with him. He messaged me or I messaged him right after I got into the finals. I'm like, Hey, as I promised you, here's our whole arc. We worked with each other and I, yeah, it was like one <laughs> that I don't want to work with again. Yeah, for sure. Well, have you ever had an experience that soured you on a brand or company? Well, it wouldn't be if there wasn't some sort of drama, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think in general, when the inmates run the asylum, when the Fed has had has like no structure at all or control of the environment, it sours a lot of people's experiences. So I think I, I think everybody's been in a Fed that soured an experience with them. Yeah, the, I don't want. It, it's not fair for me to name companies or Feds directly without them having an opportunity to respond direct. I, I don't do that kind of thing. There's a politician in you. I like it. Yeah. And lastly, which company did you enjoy being part of the most? Uh, probably New Era of Wrestling, the first fight I got into. Because it was just like a new experience. Interesting. After that, um, Empire and Utah, I would put you know in those lines, you know, one, two, and three. But I don't think there's anything that's going to take away from your first e fighting experience that you did like a long term stint sure. on. Up next, we got Roland. What made you come back to Defiance? That's his first question. Just to be able to write over the top shit and not have it be judged and that be on a points based system. I just want to write something that's, you know, whatever. Part of, part of the show. Yeah, whatever. You know, just have fun. If you're not having fun, what's the point? There you go. And what goals do you have there? Just to write. write <laughs> yeah, just write, just write with my friends. You know, um, I want to do, I want to get into some storylines. Like some, I want to do like a long-term, slow build cap off kind of. I've never done that before. Like where you have like a three arc build to get to that match. And I want to have that. Like I want to have that experience where people are like invested through three arcs where they're going to be like, yeah, now we want this match. We want to we read it. Absolutely, the big build. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. I'm looking for the same thing for when I drop the belt. I've been telling Brian. He thinks I'm just trying to stretch the run out. No, I want like not even to like build like like a belt situation. Just like a good few that I can that like a, you get the maybe the first arc you get that one match, second arc arc it flips and you get that trio. You know. Absolutely. And uh, who do you see as potential storyline partners for Perfection? Who is there right now? So, like I brought off. Brought up uh, originally uh, when we were talking about my second run of Defiance, definitely in the Fuse Bros. Um, I can I can see that being a combo. 
their whole gamer thing. I love video games, but knowing perfection, he probably doesn't even know what a PS4 is. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is Duck Hunt? You know, um, mm-hmm. he probably played Duck Hunt, tried to do Duck he probably Hunt. probably played Pong, yeah. And bring an LED, like LCD screen out, and the Fuse Bros are like, yeah, you can't only really do that on projection. He's like, what's a projection TV? You know, just like fun stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Dex Joy. Because that just seems like a fun ass character to work with. I love Dex Joy. He's my favorite face in, in in Defiance. Yeah, that would just be fun. Just like him being a bigger guy and doing the whole like well, look at me, like why can't you look like I do? You know, perfect body kind of thing. And absolutely I want to do like Scott Douglas just to revive the IWF situation and kind of like cap off, you know, like a story arc there. I'm I'm glad you have multiple in mind. That means we're gonna keep you around for a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Up next is D. Watts. Uh, which character archetype do you enjoy or hate are being against the most and why? I'm going to go with hate the most, and that's probably going to be monsters. Like monsters okay. and violent characters. It, it's like my ultimate weakness. People like the minister uh, and how. Like I just cannot write against those. Dan, Dan Ryan, like if you just write, role playing against just straight up monster art character just can't do it i can't write a monster character so i just write myself into a wall uh th- i think that's my hardest interesting yeah that's a good answer good question i've, I've gotten that yeah, one that's, that's a really good question um for rp what's your preferred character development to trash talk ratio uh 100 to 1 trash talk. 100 to yeah uh, zero zero character development and 100 percent trash talk i'm 2080 but i'm a lot of trash talk no uh that's a little bit of a joke, but I, I don't, I don't know what character development is, man. Like to be honest with you, because some people think character development is telling me about having dinner with their family, yeah. the OOC life of yeah. the character, and I don't do that, and I don't know. Like character development to me would be me talking about the segment that happened last week, how that affects perfection, how it doesn't perfect affect perfection and whatever. And then a bunch of fucking trash talk in there. Like, it, I don't understand. Like, I don't know. Character development just seems weird. Like, and especially in RP, why there used to be a thing. I, you probably know this where you would write character development RPs to develop your character. He's separate of the it's RP com- that counted for the match. Exactly. Completely separated. Yeah. So when those two got fused, I, I don't know, but I don't like it. <laughs> I just want, I don't. You just want to, you just want to RP. It. Yeah, I just yeah. want RP. It. it should just be, you know, if I was to run a fed, it would just be people writing 1980 style promos on a backdrop. Cause I don't care about you going to a club and having a bunch of hookers around you or doing cocaine off at the bar top. Don't talk about the strippies like that. Nah, like, you know, <laughs> just cut a promo. Then that's, that's what I try to do, but it's few. So, so much that, yeah. D. Watts has sent us a lot of questions. I love it. What's your strategy for recovering or saving face following a big loss? That's a great question because I write such a shitty character <laughs> that I'm able to play it off that never happened. Uh, so with perfection, the way I've written him is a so obtuse that everything that happens is going to be revisionist history. Uh, I lost the icon title match against Mike best. And what I did was just make it like, Oh, I missed by a hair. If I would have gotten that by a hair, it would have all been over. So I didn't really, Mike best didn't beat me. I beat me. And it's always, you know, <laughs> and people dog at it like, Oh, well, you're not selling the heat back to the, to his character. Well, no, no, no you, you just don't understand perfection that he's not going to sell it. He's not going to sell that at all. Even if he's limping, if and he's, he's limping, wearing a cast, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, my leg's a little shoddy. It it's is a scratch. It's a scratch, yeah. whatever. Are you sure you you got a cast on that? <laughs> it's just plaster. That, that's the development. Yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's in the description. Yeah, right? exactly. Perfection winces before taking a shot of tequila. Yeah, yeah right. Like, ooh, no. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. So, what is your take on sub characters? How many is too many? God bless you if you can do more than one character. Yes. And the, now, now, and what we mean is one character that is not a carbon copy of another character. Yeah. So if you people, can, people you can, will write three, and then they all seem the same. Yeah. If you can, if you can switch the plate like that and and write like that, man, you are 
you're a gem to this hobby. <laughs> you're a deeper writer than I am. That's for sure. Like I can't, I have a hard time trying to write perfection. So for me to even like the only sub characters I can think of are like accent characters, like Marshall Owens, who I stole from Sean Jackson, which is fine. I think he'll allow it. I didn't ask him, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take a lawyer, you know, lawyer character and there'll be sub characters, but they're not really, they're not wrestlers. They're not wrestlers. They're not really part of the story. You're not really going to see them more than like once every six months. But if you're writing a main character and running like a tag team at the same time, do you, man? I can't do that. And if you if you're able to do that, just hand you the titles because <laughs> you have more imagination than anybody in the, anybody around that I know. Well, get ready to meet Seth on Defiance because he runs about a thousand. I can't, I can't even imagine doing that. Um, biggest efed pet peeves. You know this one. You see. <laughs> you see. All right. So if you start a sentence with "you see," you see what what had happened was. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I want to punch my fucking screen. I, I, I hate it. Um, you know. You see, uh, when it comes to this match perfection. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see, when I come down to the ring. Everybody will see that I am the champion because you see I am the best. <laughs> it drives you nuts. <laughs> oh man, heard it. we hear it in chat all the time. All the time. <laughs> I'll grab little like RPs that I see. I'm like, you see this, and I'll put you see in big giant <laughs> capital letters. Yeah, you see is, is one of my biggest pet peeves. I'll stop reading an RP if I see you see. There you go. What is your biggest source of inspiration? Is it other RPs, music, movies, comics, wrestling, etc.? I like uh, well, my biggest source of RPs would probably be I, I like to watch Bachwinkle, right, and see what his cadence is and how he's cadencing himself talking. I like to like mimic that. And then I don't read RPs. So if I'm in a RP cycle, my RP opponent rps i won't read that rp until after i p- until you're finished yeah because i don't i find it and this might couple with my biggest pet peeves i do not like when people take respond. an rp and just directly respond to that this if you talk about zero creativity i used to do it you know i used to take people's rps when i first started and paste them into word and break down the paragraphs and go line yeah. by line, like same response. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so cheap. It's garbage. It's not it's a too easy, it's so easy. And so I don't use RPs as inspiration at all, because I don't want to be the person that's going to, if you want to use my RPs as inspiration, go for it. I'm going to be like, Oh, you need my RPs to inspire yourself. Well, that's, that's a tip to my hat. Thank you. But yeah, no, no RPs for sure. Definitely not inspiration. Uh, segments are inspirations for sure. Uh, using like watching other promos and not using their language, but like if I'm in an RP segment or uh, where somebody's done something that tr- relates to actual wrestling, I'll go back and try to find somebody like a Jericho, or William Regal, or Rick Rude, or Nick Bachman that has cut a promo about that and then deconstruct it not use it but like how is their cadence how is their posture how are they looking and then just add my little kind of twists and turns in there yeah same way I, I, I write matches just take a match and deconstruct it and reconstruct it yeah sometimes i'll watch matches for ideas i'll see a cool signature or not a signature but like a string of moves but then i think oh this is where i would take it instead of what they did or I'll be, uh, or, yeah, like that, that. Like that's wonderful. Like that's what I do too. Like just take stuff like that. Or I'll be watching a movie, right? And I'll hear like a line. I'm like, oh, that's a great line. And I'll just, I'll write it down on a notepad and then revisit that line and just kind of deconstruct that line to its own little kind of thing. Hey, you don't say that. I do say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, worst RP cliche. You see. You see, and um. Responding to RPs, but worst RP cliche for sure is probably anything involving going into a wrestling ring in a gym, working out, or going to an indie fed promotion and cutting a promo. Nice. I haven't seen the indie fed in a while. Yeah, it used to be a bigger thing, like going to the indie fed and cutting a promo there. 
Because I always think, like, if I'm on a contract, right, with a company, like, WWE ain't going to release me to go to some little company to cut a promo. Like, they're not going to do that. You have to be off the books and shit like that. So, I don't know. Up next is at Chris Ross, the boss. Oh, I love him. How's Barton doing? Barney dog. Uh, He's doing good. He's rolling dice. Have you seen the dice videos? I have, and they're amazing. I'm the the number one dice fan. I am subscribed on YouTube. Check out Dice, uh, Chris Ross, the Dice Maniac. Actually, those dice make me interested in trying to play Dungeons and Dragons. So thanks, Chris, for that. There you go. At Chris Ross, did you intentionally pick out the perfect theme song to masturbate to? Yes. I, <laughs> when I when I sat down uh, in IWF to create the perfection character, I was like, what song will Chris Ross masturbate to? <laughs> <laughs> so so the funny thing about that was, uh, about that theme song is, rather, that what what is the theme song first of all? Um, it's "Perfect Gentleman" by an obscure band called Halloween, big metal band in Germany. And I found that theme. I'm like, this is the best theme ever. And then Chris Ross said that he masturbated to it. And <laughs> when I <laughs> when I came to How, I was like, I'm changing that theme song just simply based off the fact that Chris Ross masturbated to it. Oh god! So I changed the theme song, and, and uh, my girlfriend heard the new theme song. She's like. What is that? I'm like, that's Perfection's new theme. So I was like, eh, change it back to the other one. <laughs> so I did. So you're back. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, at Ravage, what is your favorite accomplishment in e-fetting? Be it a feud, a championship, a match, doesn't have to be your greatest, just the one you're most proud of. Good question. Yeah, very good question. Um, we touched upon it a little bit in the earlier segment, and this might you know, just a shout out to my boys and girls from Dynasty in 24K. Uh, just being able to write in a great stable, you know, like a household name stable. People know Dynasty around the hobby. They know the characters of Dynasty. Uh, n- normally, when I was in F Wrestling or any of those, I was the outsider looking in, right? So I was sitting on the sidelines writing my own character while saying these big stables in like Empire Pro, um, like Cameron Cruz Project. I mean, like, wow, those are the top name guys and they're all in the stable. Like, I want to be part of that. Like, I want to be in that stable. And, and just never being a good enough writer at that time to be in that. So to be part of one and be, you know, the top chief of it for a little bit, and then it transitioned, you know, to Sean Jackson being a chop chief, and then, you know, LaFon Baca being the chop chief, and then, you know, the Bravs being the top chiefs in, in, in their division of tag team. Just being and the and technically the Bravs ended dynasty. Yeah, and the Bravs ended dynasty. So just being a part of a history that lasted so long and such a staple, I mean, I, I would consider it and, and being a founding member of it, that's my biggest accomplishment. Like the titles were cool. That's awesome. Tiles were cool, but just being able to write with people and write good shit. There were people who hated not just not hated the handlers, where they legitimately hated the characters. <laughs> was just awesome. This is just a great experience. And being able to repeat that with 24K was it's it's been a lot of fun. Oh, so much fun. Just doing it back to back. Cause now you have Dynasty. And now you have 24K, and 24K is now the you know now the new dynasty. You know, it's like the dynasty of the new era, if you would. I love it, and I'm looking forward to what happens next. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna see what happens. I think everybody will be excited if anything happens. We'll see. No spoilies. No spoilies. Uh, up next is everybody loves Will, mm-hmm. your friend, my friend, La Flama Blanca, favorite tag team partner of your career. Oh, well, he it's obviously Andy Murray. Because, you know, that's the most recent stable I've been in. Uh, there's because a, Will asked the question. Well, I don't know if anybody knows this, but there's a T-shirt you can buy to cement uh, 24K's uh, double victory in tag team championships. <laughs> <laughs> it's over at EWTs.com, EFEDTs.com, or EWMerch.com. We've got them all. Yeah, got to plug it. But um, 
No, no, no. Uh, I love Andy, and and being able to win a championship with Andy was awesome. I love Andy with like he's a wonderful person. Uh, but my favorite tag team of all time is definitely with Will. Uh, just being able to win the titles with him, have them for so that nobody could beat us. We had them for months on end. Uh, we had when we won those titles, Ben made us a poser with us together, ma- matching tights, matching poses together is is great. Uh, we held them for so long that Ben had to make a total pay per view to shake up all the titles. So. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Will knows he's my favorite tag team partner of all time. He, I think he's my favorite. I think he's my only uh, outside of like CBR that I did like one or two tag team matches with. Sean Jackson, I did one or two tag team matches with. Andy, I held the belts with, but it, we freebirded them, so um, I went really. You, you never lost them. I never lost them. So, but to be able to defend them and help hold them to the point where Ben's like, well, nobody's going to top these guys. Just shake it all up. And that was great. And if it wasn't for that, for us being so awesome as a tag team, he wouldn't have had a lesser tag team partner with uh, Tag Team of the Damned. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Pete. I love Pete, but you know, just busting balls. Uh, favorite Fed you've been in? I think you kind of mentioned this one earlier. Yeah, new new era for sure. Uh, like I said, close second with Empire Pro. Um, when I first joined Empire Pro, Brunk wasn't the Fed head of Empire Pro. It was this gentleman called uh, John. Um, I don't really know. I don't know his last name. Uh, he had a handle uh, of, a- of AIM. That's that's how long ago that was that we were communicating <laughs> on instant, uh, AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, and then joined that, and he ran a smooth ship. I got to run John Doe over there. Adrian Willard did the stint with Brunk, and Brunk was a solid fed head when he was over there. He worked with me very well. Um, he worked storylines with me, and tried to build my character and gave me all the opportunities to improve my writing. And uh, to be honest with you, Empire Pro, I think, improved my writing the most because of all the handlers that were there. It was just such a conglomerate of good writers, great writers, that it just made you be better. But good good times. Um, And then after that would be UTA. And the only reason why it's after Empire Pro is because those were the first two fads I was in. Sure. You got uh, fond memories of those. Absolutely. Favorite alcoholic beverage? Well, uh, it is for sure vodka, followed closely by whiskey and good old America Budweiser. Yes, you introduced me to the Moscow Mule before anybody else did. Well, you know, I try to sneak it by you, bro. Like you're like you I tried, don't, yeah. Like, I don't drink. I don't drink vodka. I was like, no, just try this. It's not. It's 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 not mixed. You're like it's a beer. It's a beer. <laughs> it's ginger beer. <laughs> that's yep. what you try to tell me. It's ginger beer. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good time to walk into different bars and like everybody was like. Well, that was crazy because we went from like a brewery. We went from dinner to like a brewery. I was already hammered. I'm like, all right, let's go back. And you're like, yeah, let's go back. And then you pulled into another bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go back to the hotel. Yeah, let's go back. Here's the bar. <laughs> well, you weren't driving, bro. So like. No, I was not. Yeah. I was enjoying your Batman wheels and the Batman rest in peace. RIP, bro. Is dead. Batmobile. So. Uh, how excited are you to job to will in defiance? A spinal tap would say 11. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest regret in the hobby? Joining that uh, weird pick base fed boardwalk. <laughs> oh, man, that was a rough week. <laughs> that was, it, it was a rough week. <laughs> it was a rough, it was a rough uh, 500 words. Uh, yeah, no, I did actually lose to an RP. That was 500 words about a cat or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. A yeah, horrible we lost place. to an RP that never mentioned us once. Yeah, so. it was a bad, it was a bad place. But you know what? Uh, different, different strokes for different folks. You do you. If that's your, most, if that's what an RP is, you know, we should have did our homework and and really written about geese or some shit. Yeah, we should. Yeah, geese. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your most hated opponent in character or out of character? So in character, it would be Man Manzolinski. I and think out that of character it would be met. Yeah, out of character, <laughs> out of character, out of character. Um, to be honest, I don't hate anybody out of character. I think OSC wise, it takes too much for me to hate a person that I've never met in real life. 
So I, and, and I don't really care about the hobby that much to invest my feelings. So uh, maybe Stevie for not submitting any questions yeah, this week. Fuck you, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> Manly looking man, you. Um, Manly bastard. Uh, I dislike a lot of people in the fed though, or in the hobby rather. Uh, you know, people like Krang. Krang. <laughs> <laughs> Cranging and banging, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay. On a scale of one, which is excited, and ten, which is really excited, how excited are you to job to me in defiance? <laughs> Give me that one. Eleven. Spinal tap. <laughs> also, love you, Jay, from Will. I love you, too. Love you, Will. Everybody loves Will. Up next is Alex Smiley. Do you believe in life after love? Yes. Can you sing it? No. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you were drunk enough. No, I'm not. No, oh, if I damn. try to sing it, everybody would think that uh, I'm strangling my cat. So no. I am uh, drinking one of your lovely Chicago beverages. Which this one? one this one you did not send me. This is just a Goose Island IP. Ah, Goose Island still great. Remind me when we get closer to December to send you a Goose Island bourbon. Although you do not like stouts, but no, they are they are barrel marked. I'll give anything a shot once. Um. Finally, or not finally, do you believe in magic in a young girl's heart? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And what would you like to see be part of the future of this hobby? Like we were talking about, man, having the cause and being able to have like commentary right behind that. And like, I don't know how you would do segments. I don't, I don't know. But even, so, even if you, even if you didn't do a call, you could do like, I don't know, audio results where you had commentary, read what happened instead of written. I don't know. I don't know. But like, I think that would be so freaking cool. Like just commentary results. And, but I don't know how you would do segments. Like that's the one thing that gets me like somebody figure out how to do segments. Somebody smart enough out there in this hobby to figure out how you would do segments in this type of environment and do it please. Cause that would be the best. I'm going to start working on that. Yeah. Like that would be so cool. Like just listening to, instead of having to sit there and read, you just plug it in your, your drive home, ride home 30 minutes. Yeah. And you can't skip to the end. Cause you don't know where the fuck it is. Exactly. <laughs> you go 50 minutes in, you're like a headlock by who bro, a snap mare. We're 30 minutes into the match. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, very good. I got one more little surprise for you. I like surprises. Right? Right as the show was getting ready to kick off, I sent a little uh, text message to our good friend, William, and he decided that it would be a good idea to do some word association on your sh your episode. Okay. So I asked him for 20 words that would be good for word association. Here's what we got. So I want you to give me the first, I don't know, thought that comes to your mind. It doesn't have to be one word. Sure. Just the first thing that comes to your mind. And we're going to go backwards, bottom up, because I think he tried to set me up. Number 20, perfection. Bad heel. <laughs> Terrible heel. Number 19, sandbagging. Great thing to do, especially if people give you the opportunity to do it. If the Fed head says you can post at 1159, why give your opponent any opportunity in, the, in an RP Fed to use ammunition against you? Post at 1159. Deadlines. Same concept. <laughs> use them <laughs> yeah. use them use the them to UTA your arcade a great place that i never uh took a title in i was never a champion in the uta arcade the specter buried him literally <laughs> promos 1980s do it nice dynasty assemble Shake hands. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. <laughs> VCW. <laughs> what was that? VCW. VCW. Little shitty indie promotion that had not a lot of good characters. <laughs> Pete's book. Buy it. Buy it over at Amazon.com. I bought it, and he wrote a nice I little message for me. Beautiful. I bought a copy too. You can check it over at Amazon.com. One chance, The Legend of Valerian's Garden. I like metal. I like rock bands. Good book to buy. There you go. Suspension. Don't say naughty words on Twitter. 
<laughs> in character. <laughs> Side chats. Wonderful experiences that lead to Ben quitting regular chat. And great friendships. Can't beat them. The, wild, the wildfire title. Wildfire title. Always have a person that has a password to post your RPs. <laughs> <laughs> we did that in how too. Yeah, we did. Very smart. After I, Very after smart. I fucked up, we Very learned that well. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight, all or nothing. Literally means all or nothing. So that yes. was a that was a great pay per view. Um, ben asked all the handlers that had a title to write a segment, and they all wrote these like intricate segments. And I just wrote perfection, just handed his title, and like, fuck you. <laughs> if I gotta do it, I gotta do it quick. Whatever. Chris Hopper. I hate women wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a good point. I actually agree with Chris Hopper on that one. I don't understand female characters fighting regular grown men. It's like, could you imagine Ronda Rousey fighting Brock Lesnar? No. No, exactly. So that's unbelievable. I understand that that, that the idea of wrestling is supposed to be unbelievable, but that's yep. beyond the realm of unbelievable. So I mean, I get it. It's like trying I, I, see, to, like, both, I, to I see both ends of the argument. You know, X Pac. I like that. I can understand. But like Andy Murray versus no offense to Pete MJ Flair, that would that, like that would be a squash. Yep, I, I see what you mean, and uh, I. But I guess the idea is this is fantasy wrestling, and in your fantasy, you can do what you want. Yeah. Well. No. Well, Chris Hopper. Chris Hopper. Uh, the the Shoot Kings. The Shoot Kings. Um, great idea, poor execution. Krang. Got me suspended, and <laughs> I sent Ben a little uh, teenage mutant Krang toy. <laughs> toy. Krang toy. <laughs> After it happened for Christmas. That was that was my introduction to uh, Dynasty. To social justice warriors. Oh, was it? That's uh, yes. yeah. That was wonderful. Mental rape. That's a great freaking name. <laughs> That's a great name. Um, and best of all is the entrance is usually longer than the matches, which is even better. Can you feel it? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I can. Manly men. That's what we are. We are the manliest of men. Dynasty. The best stable to ever be created in e fedding history. Boom. Boom. Drop to my give, me another, give me give me give me another fed. Give me another fed or another stable that you can literally just be like, Oh yeah, I remember all those characters. And I know that I know Shake Hands. They like this is a tag. You you don't know that. <laughs> they're, 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 that, that, that does not exist. <laughs> Finally from Will Madman Zelinsky. I, I hate that dog. I hate <laughs> that, that, you know, um, yeah, the dog. Yeah. Well, as I look at the timer, we still have a couple more minutes, so I'm going to throw in myself. Sure, go for it, my man. Let's do it. Will Haynes. Will Haynes, uh, great character, good handler, but the character just never stuck with me. I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah, like, I, like the character was good, but it just never, like, I, I could never click with it. Like, there's just like, some, like, element missing like he was supposed to, i don't know if it's like supposed to be like a white trash character like i don't know wrestle show better than victory you son of a bitch sorry hashtag free mikey unlikely i thought we freed you we did <laughs> but i was stuck on victory forever well i think i was put on victory for a good while when i came back too oh i don't know but you weren't joining dynasty then no i wasn't i think all dynasty was on Russell show and you were, were you, they were yeah, except for sorry, me except for you Kendricks one of my favorite characters in in, in E-Fetting e because it's so it's almost like perfection but done in such a way that it's not perfection like yep. it's just so like just oblivious like a blimey blimey yeah. <laughs> like because I try to play perfection that way but I can't because he's supposed to be kind of like this swarmy businessman at the same time so I can't play him like totally stupid, but I'd like to try to like dabble in the dumb. 
but he does it where it's not dumb, but like where it sets up well. Where it's like, yes. Oh, I'm not playing dumb. I'm playing. I well, no, it is. I'm playing dumb, and then when but I'm, he, not, dumb. But I'm not dumb, and then when yeah. it comes to the time when he has to be JFK, JFK, not playing. You know the setup. It's like, oh, oh shit! There, there's the, there, he, there he is. You know, there's the fire. There's yeah. the fire. So he does it really and, good. And what's crazy to think is UTA was his first Fed ever. He does a better job at his character than I do in probably the five <laughs> characters that I've had in whatever at twenty I, years, yeah, yeah. years in. So yeah, he he's done a good job. But you know, he's been around great people. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it andy murray andy murray uh great ki- great guy solid solid person i have i have no no like just the guy will s- stick with you and stand up for you behind the scenes he'll hit you up on the side just to give you character development ideas and he's l-o-y-a-l very selfless man very selfless a manly man. Very manly. <laughs> Jono. Jono, number one guy. Love Jono. Jono does everything he can to make the experience fun. He does great job in what I do poorly in. So he does great description work. He does like he can get everything down to a detail. I'm like, here's a tie. He's like, no, no, we need to have the tie be beautiful, like so everybody knows what kind of tie this is. So it accentuates how shitty these people are. He just, in this, he's just so good at doing that kind of stuff and setting the atmosphere for a character. He, he's just, I can't speak highly enough about what he does as far as building characters around description work. And then when he gets into actual promo work, it, it just blows it off the wall. He he he's very solid. He's so Love him. Love he's him. So good. Um, Sub Pop Scott Douglas. Sub Pop, great character. Love that face that will push beyond his limits and will always fight like it's his last breath. I think that's such a good contrast with perfection. It's like if I'm losing this match, I'll just walk out. I'd rather walk out of this match and get a 10 count than have you be able to have the privilege of saying, I pinned your shoulders down. So it's just a great character. Brian does a good, great job of, of writing him. One of the few characters, like if I was to rank characters that I, I want to work with, like top five, number one would be Scott Douglas. Number two would be LaFon Blanca. I, I would love to do a program with you. Like even I had to flip, perfection face for a hot minute, like try and do that or, um, doing code name Reaper stalker again. Like those are my like top fives. I look at like, cause they just work in the great contrast. I'm going to pull some names out of my ass. You ready? Yeah. Go for it. Gentleman Jack. Gentleman Jack. I loved that character. So uh, did I. It, it, it was such a great idea. I think that I probably would have had the same problem that he did, which was writing your character into a wall. Because it's such a f- finesse character angle and archetype that there's not, unless you develop the background of him being rich or something that you can build around, it would have worked. But there's there are so many characters like that in UT that you had to be on the outside to do it. Um, no, it was it was a great character. I, I loved it. It was. I think that if he would have went like, do you remember when? William Regal did his angle against Hulk Hogan. Yeah. If it was more central, like in that aspect, I think it would have, it would have worked a lot better. Eric Dane. Eric Dane. Uh, love, love the character. The guy's a, a fucking staple to e fetting. You know, yep. you can't, you, you, that is a household name. Eric Dane. I mean, that's all I have to say about that. Like Justin writes a great character. Justin ran a, a tight ship. He understands what it means to run a fed in the view of wrestling, like the actual product. He loves wrestling. He loves wrestling. And that's what you want in a fed head. You want somebody that loves the actual thing we watch, you know, that, that, that is invested enough that 
he can pull. He'd be like, hey, remember that angle that blah, blah, blah did in 1995? No. Well, we're going to recreate that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's Justin. That's Justin. And you got to love that. You have to love that. But if you ask him about that angle in 2010, he's not going to know what the fuck. No, you're you don't know. Yeah, exactly. He's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Who's who's Dust, who's who's you know who's that guy? Who's Cody Rhodes? Who's Cody yeah. Rhodes? <laughs> you mean Dusty, right? No. Uh, yeah, love Justin. Finally, your experience on the EFed podcast. The best experience I've had. You know, um, I've been busting your balls a little bit. Like you, you remember, I, I busted your balls a couple of days ago that you took me off. The list. <laughs> I did on accident. Yeah, I was like, "Wow, wow, you switched me off with somebody else." else and now now we had this opportunity to be able to do this and i think this is actually a great thing for people that are not interested in the hobby to be able to hear people talk about it and other handlers to be able to see other people's experiences in the hobby what you're doing is i think very very good very great and hopefully it brings more people in because, as I said in the beginning, uh, I've seen the same people around multiple places. So hopefully this reaches out to people um, and every podcast before this reaches out to people and that you know raises their interest and raises awareness. And I think that's that's the biggest that's the hardest part about the hobby is raise, raising awareness to it, because I'll tell you right now, I don't want to be the guy that has the perfection uh, poster that Ben made me framed in my office and my boys at, come into my house and be like, Hey, why do you have a, a, a half naked, uh, dude, <laughs> man. man, cartoon guy sitting, <laughs> sitting up there. Well, let me tell you about my weird ass hobby. Or, <laughs> Hey, what's that? What's 24 K mean? Why are we are men? What is that? What is that? Am I not a man? No, you're not 24 K. Uh, so, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's great. And I, 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 I hope that more people will, sign up for this and the opportunity yes. to be able to do this and keep it up, man. You're doing wonderful work. You do. And it's wonderful. Brian does a wonderful job in production. You guys are doing great work in promoting it. So yeah, you know, you're, you guys are pretty much the ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> he does call me the Vince McMahon yeah. of, of EFA. You guys yeah. are the ambassadors of the hobby right now. So I keep it up. I appreciate that, bud. And and you guys can get signed up for the EFED podcast interview. All you got to do is drop me a line in the DMs. We are booking for May of 2021. <laughs> so get in now because next month we'll be booking for August of 2021. You'll be even further back. You know, and that's just kudos to everybody that also wants to promote everything and, you know, promote their character. The, the hobby is bigger than people think. I'm telling you. I, I came into this project thinking we would talk about defiance a lot and it'd be me and my friends jerking each other off and it's blown up into, I got a thousand followers on Twitter. You know, we get a couple hundred listens a week. It's, it's turned into a great thing and I appreciate all of the support from everybody. And I'm learning every single interview, how big this hobby really is. You know, it really opens your mind, especially when I see on your Twitter account and I'm seeing people in I'm like, what the hell is that fed? You know, I never heard of this this place. <laughs> you know, but it but I'll click it and I'll look and I'll say, Oh wow, this fed is you know this. So that's really cool. Not something I would join. And no offense to them, it's just not something I would be into. But but it's cool that there's a, like a whole different side of but it. But they have a whole roster of you know thirty people. I'm like, well, that's one fed, you know, and there's ten of them responding, you know, that's three hundred people right there. Yeah. And just scattered around in their own little universes. And that's awesome. I, I don't. I wish there was a central. It, it. You know what? You have created that, and that I what, have over in the Defed Podcast Discord. Yeah, and that's that's what's wonderful about this. You've created a central point for anybody that wants to be in any Fed that they want. You want to do pick base. You want to do avatar. You want to do car. You want to do RP. You want to do angle. It's all right there. One that's big great. giant resource. It's so much fun, and uh, I've had a blast doing it. And I'm glad you're back in the game, buddy. I've been trying so long to get you back. And you know, I even sat there at dinner with you and your girlfriend, Yuli, and just told her, I'm going to get him. Oh, yeah, and, our, and they, they, they all made fun of us the entire time. Yeah. Which is and then we, and then you came to my wedding, and I said, I'm getting him back. It's going to happen. And you did, so. <laughs> and I did, yes. <laughs> Well, buddy, thank you so much for joining us for the podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, is there anything else you want to plug, promote, or put over before we go? Yeah, definitely check out check out um, Defiance Wrestling. It's a smooth ship. 
everything, all the hand, everybody there that's that's running their characters has welcomed me with open arms, even though it kind of flaked in quotes um, the first time. They, just, <laughs> they, they brought me in, and they're like, "Hey, do you?" They hit me up. You know, they, I had like three or four DMs like, "Hey, what what are you doing next, Sark? You know, do you want to do something?" It's just so welcoming, so open. Um, can't recommend that enough. If you're into it, I would recommend how. Um, how is a, a, the Lee's a great fat head. He runs a smooth ship. He, you know, he, he tries his best to make sure all the handlers are, are taken care of. Um, not everybody's cup of tea, you know, it wasn't my cup of tea, but I would still recommend it to anybody that's interested. Um, and you can check those both out at defiancewrestling.com and ho wrestling.com. Absolutely. So yeah, that's that, you know, those are my two shout outs. Um, obviously, Diane, see my shout out. Hello, Jono. Hello, everybody there. Um, and blow the couch. Yeah, blow the couch. <laughs> blow the couch. You know where I'm at. <laughs> Dynasty Assemble. I love it. All right, man. Thanks so much. Uh, really appreciate you joining us. It's been fun going over your history and doing these questions. Uh, great opportunity. I appreciate you having me on. And again, anybody that is interested in doing this, you should. You're a great host. And I know. You, um, despite me, the hobby will continue and is wonderful and everybody continue doing great work. Everybody does great work. So just keep it up. Love you. Will. love you. Will hundred <laughs> percent. Well, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this week's episode and talking to Jay. I really enjoyed your question of the week answers. And I really enjoyed just hearing from you guys all week over on the Twitter machine and the discord. I really enjoy what we put together here, and I appreciate everyone who listens, everyone who participates, even if you just listen to the question of the week or you just participate in that. I really appreciate the support, guys. A thousand Twitter followers recently. We gave away a free eFed podcast t shirt. The winner was so excited to receive it. And uh, I really appreciate everyone who participated in the sharing, the, the, the growing of the podcast. Uh, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for each and every one of you. I want to give a shout out to our Patreons over at patreon.com slash eFed podcast. Those guys are awesome. We've got so many great people over there helping support the show on a monthly basis. I want to give a shout out to each of them individually. So here we go. So thanks to Occupy Pro Wrestling, our newest sponsorship patron, Alex Smiley. He's been a great guy and a great addition to the Discord. Shout out to him. Shout out to Jason Reeves Stalker. Creepy Justin. Appreciate you jumping in there, buddy. Shout out to the dues, even though I hate you and you suck, you're still a good friend and a good supporter of the show. Shout out to Bobby Dean, Colin, Brunk, Mike Best, Queen Linz, Spectacular Disaster, Mr. Pete, and much, much more. Thank you to Rivs, our good buddy Jay, who's on the show today. He's a patron. Thank you to Sober David. Of course, thanks to Judge Megan, who's been a great supporter of the show. Been uh, helping us out on the t-shirt stuff. Been just loving everything we do and putting us out on blast. Appreciate all of that. Want to shout out to the Fuzz Master Flex, one of the original OGs, moderator of the Discord. We got so many cool people over there, guys. Percival Conrad Prince. I don't know what happened to him. He kind of disappeared, but he's still supporting the show. So shout out to him. One of the great car guys and one of the really fun color commentators out there on the Twitch machine. We've got all of them and many more. Supporting the show over at patreon.com slash efed podcast. You guys can get in there on the ground floor for as little as $3 a month. Really appreciate everyone who's helped out getting the early shows, the ad free shows, the Q&A on the uh, monthly reel, all of that stuff. You guys have been great. Want to shout out to everyone who's helped support the show and, and paid for commercials. Those have been great. The EWC has been a great sponsor. Shout out to those guys. What a great fed. Uh, High Octane Wrestling has been fantastic to me and Defiance Wrestling as well. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. You can check us out on Patreon. Check us out on Discord. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram, at eWrestlingTees. And uh, hope, hopefully you join us next week for episode 41 as well. Thanks for listening to the eFed podcast. For Brian, I'm Mikey, where the wrestling is written, but the characters, the characters are, are real. real.
on Patreon. Patreon. Patreon.